Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Mercer, voice actor and dungeon master for Critical Role on Geek & Sundry, where I take a bunch of other voice actors and run them through a fantastical fantasy adventure through the world of Dungeons & Dragons. We play every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Geek & Sundry's Twitch stream. Please come watch us live if you have the opportunity. Back episodes and future episodes will be uploaded on the Geek & Sundry website, so you can also check them out there. In the meantime, enjoy. Welcome to the first episode of Critical Role. Now what this basically is, is a continuation of our weekly D&D &D game. Me and a bunch of other likely nerdy and enjoyable voice actors gathering around, rolling some dice, killing some creatures, having some adventure. And now we have the pleasure of bringing it on the stream for you to watch, enjoy, and occasionally interact with. So, uh, before we get to that, to give you a little backstory on the characters you'll be seeing this evening, we're going to play some videos for you in just a second. But do note, for all you hardcore gamers out there, a lot of this is house-ruled, kind of loosey-goosey, having a good time, so all you number crunchers, Stop paying attention there, just have fun with it. But uh, nevertheless, we have some background story on many of the characters you'll be seeing this evening to kind of help you jump into the story. Uh, let's go ahead and enjoy those in just a minute, and then we'll introduce the players, so have fun. Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw. A goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ale. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse. Grog felt only pity for this, for this terrified little thing. And his disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save, saved him. It was the kindness of a gnome cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from Death's Edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, Grog can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches, <laughs> or, or accompanying Scadlin to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ale. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. Under that unintimidating, petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. Literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Taldore, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee-shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways, it wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. Just like that. Her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. Every druid leader-to-be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when, or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilbin, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? 
Percy was the third of seven children, born to a noble family who lived far to the north, in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwood's men. As they ran, Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Oh, you haven't heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. A loner much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the females swoon. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I am Tiberius Stormwind. I hail from a town called Tyrix, located in the heart of Draconia, born from a politically respected family. At the age of 15, I succeeded in passing the Sorcerer's Rite, showing prodigy-like control of my magic. The judges and the Draconian High Council were amazed at how powerful my spells were for how long I had been training. At 20 years old, I was the youngest appointed member of the Magic Guild in Draconian history. For the next few years, I almost went mad from the malaise of being a guild member as it's rather boring. However, one day I happened upon a chamber, unused for quite some time. In the room were stacks of books and maps of the surrounding cities and areas around the known world. For months I would frequent the chamber and learn of artifacts from legend. After a long period of research, I made a list of artifacts that caught my eye. I brought these findings to the High Council and was told that all of the information in the chamber I stumbled upon was either believed to be fiction or unsolvable mysteries, and hence were lost forever. I found those answers to be unacceptable. A year later, I devised a ruse and managed to convince the city council to lend support in me leaving Draconia on a mission of peace and diplomacy for the surrounding kingdoms, going from town to town and making friends and allies in and for the name of Draconia. Being a red dragon born, I had quite the task on my hands in that respect, but it was exactly what I needed so I could explore the world and find these artifacts, as I felt the truth was out there. Some may describe me as buffoonish, but I say poppycock to all that. I am much sharper than most give me credit for. I just don't pay attention to things sometimes. I've also been known to be rather cunning, loyal, uh, happy-go-lucky. <laughs> And, well, dangerous. I can't help but show my true scales every now and then. But overall, I think I'm quite friendly for a dragonborn. <laughs> Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vaxil Dan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born by a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. 
but their cool reception among the elves there never warmed, and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother and journeyed back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash. Pressing the townspeople for answers, they learned of the day the dragon came. With their ties all severed, Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough, the way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so many half-elves, Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxildon quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this world were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Singorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance, and after too many years of disdainful looks, the pair decided to leave his indifference behind and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief, while Vax kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. Like so many half elves. Alrighty. Hey guys, welcome back. So, uh, just to give you a little heads up, we are playing the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, we recently converted over from Pathfinder, for those who play Pathfinder, and one of our players was a gunslinger. So there are no rules for it fifth edition, so I had to create and customize those for the game. So bear with us on that. Uh, it'll be an interesting ride regardless. We do have an eight player game we've been running for two years, which is a little crazy, which is why we go a little loose with the rules. But it's a great loop, it's a lot of fun, and not everyone can make every game, so we have enough players to definitely pull a party each time. Okay, just so you know, uh, we're having an audio bottleneck. Uh, it'll take about 30 seconds to okay. yourself out. Audio bottleneck. Any tech problems that maybe you want to murder someone? That's okay. Just a second. That's going to happen <laughs> in the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's okay to talk. We should talk. Maybe... I don't even know what that means. What's that bottleneck? Are we alright? <laughs> is the mic adjusted? Is it any better? I'm better now. All right, we're good. We're great. Thank you, guys. Uh, but yeah, so a couple of things from Pathfinder transition to 5th edition will be a little strange and fun. We have a lot of players, but they're great folks, and most of that just means I have to work really hard to make sure that the game keeps going. So that's on me. Uh, Ashley Johnson, unfortunately, cannot join us. Uh, she's our gnome cleric. Uh, Pike, she'll be here next week. Unfortunately, she's in London accepting a BAFTA. Yeah. So I think we're okay for, for Last of Us. That's harsh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, also, no donations this week, but going forward, we will have donations available for those that will help partially run the show for our wonderful cameraman and, and crew. Uh, also, half of our donations will go to charity for the 826 charity. Marisha, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, yes, 826LA is a charity that focuses on uh, tutoring children in an after-school program and helping specifically with creativity, storytelling, art, and yeah, general things that kind of relate to Dungeons and & Dragons. Woo! And uh, you should definitely check out the Time Travel Mart, which there's one in Echo Park and one in Mar Vista. So they have this amazing storefront where you can buy uh, awesome tchotchkes and things that go immediately to support uh, the 
charity in yeah. the stream, and it's awesome. It's eight two six LA. You should look it up, and there's a few all over the country. Yes. Woo. So uh, also as a heads up, because I saw some of you guys asking in the chat room, uh, these videos will be available on the Geek and Sundry YouTube channel soon enough, as well as a more extensive backstory <laughs> to the party. So we'll have all the content ready for you, so you don't have to memorize it. And, Maybe a bio page, I don't know. We'll figure something out, it'll be fine. Um, but anyway, let's open that up. You know who I am, Matthew Mercer, I'm a voice actor and been running this game for two years, hardcore nerd. Um, let's go around the table and introduce our players so you can attach the faces to the intros you just saw. Let's start on uh, this side with Travis. Oh, oh hi. Hi, I'm Travis Willingham, voice actor, uh, gamer. And I play Grog, the Goliath Barbarian. <laughs> Um, <laughs> hi, hi, I'm Laura Bailey. Um, I'm also, you know, a voice actor like kind of everyone here. Yeah, I think we all Um, and I'm playing Vexalia, the coolest chick ever. <laughs> the ranger with the bear. The ranger with the bear named Trinket, in case you didn't catch that, his name yeah. is Trinket, and he's amazing. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm uh, Liam O'Brien. I'm playing Vaxil Don, this one's twin. Uh, we are half elven. Twins, and uh, I uh, started playing D&D when I was 13, and I can't believe this is happening, so cheers, <laughs> yeah. cheers to this. <laughs> mm. My name is Taliesin Jaffe, I'm a voice actor, director, and I have been playing some form of Dungeons and Dragons, and if, if you can't tell by my black clothing, a lot of Vampire the Masquerade when I was a teenager. Uh, <laughs> there was a problem. Uh, I'm playing Percy, the gunslinger, so I'm the reason all the rules are all messed up. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Keyleth, the druid from the tribe of the Arashari, <clears throat> and I am a half elven no, you're a person. Elven. No, half elf. Half elf? Okay. Yeah, come on, man. Since day one. Yeah, we do. Yeah, half elf. Uh, yes, and um, yeah, you can see me shooting lightning and turning into awesome animals. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan Acaba. I, uh, I'm also a voice actor. I do things. Oh, I'm Marisha Ray, by the way. Did yeah. I say that? Yeah. Okay. Just I'm Marisha. Keyleth okay. is Just Marisha. In case. <laughs> Let Ryan have his moment. Don't try and break. No, it. <laughs> it's it's our moment. There you go. All right. Uh, and I'm Tiberius, the awesome sorcerer. Dragonborn. So Dragonborn. Yeah. That's right. And I'm Sam Regal, a voice actor and stuff. And uh, my character is Scanlan Shortheart, the uh, the gnome bard who sings a lot. And let's start playing. Yeah. Let's yeah. Do it. <laughs> let's jump on in. Thank you. Whew. All right. So last we left off, just to give you guys a little backstory, uh, the party had completed uh, a large venture in saving the nearby city of Iman, one of the central capitals of this uh, human civilization of Tal'Dorei. Um, they managed to halt a demonic insurrection within the throne, and for, as such, were greeted to a hero's celebration and had a keep built in their honor. Uh, over the six month period of the keep being constructed, they went about their own ways and then returned to see its final creation. Um, however, they did not have a chance to really enjoy it immediately as one of their good friends and allies, uh, Arcanist Alora Vaisorin of the Taldori Council, came to them requesting the aid, saying that a longtime friend of hers, Lady Kima of Ord, who is a, a very well-known and very well-respected halfling paladin of Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon, uh, had been gone on pilgrimage for a while, essentially a vision quest that is part of her own development as a paladin. Uh, as part of this, she uh, let the information go to Allura that uh, a dark vision had came, come to her, saying that some, some sort of evil root was beginning to breed beneath Craghammer in the mountains within. Uh, Craghammer, of which is the nearby Dwarven civilization that you guys have previously not been allowed entry to because you, the Dwarves, weren't fans of nobody without any political means of entry. Right. Um, however, she managed to acquire the necessary documentation, offered you a very substantial reward should you find the whereabouts of Lady Kima of Vord uh, and hopefully bring her back safely. You left. On the pathway to the Dwarven citadel of Craghammer, you were ambushed by a group of roaming barbarian Goliaths, uh, of which, partway through the battle, Grog managed to recognize one of them as a previous uh, ally, and no longer ally at this time. You, oh, bitch. Yet, the Barbarian, for this first and only time so far, managed to avert battle through a social encounter and rolled pretty damn well on a, on a, a persuasion check. So you got one. You got, you got one. You got your one. No, never again. Next time, he dies. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> 
Uh, but you managed to to not turn it into complete bloodshed, <laughs> and you continued on your way to Craghammer. Presented your paperwork. We're given entry into the city, and that is where we begin this oh, adventure. No. In the city of Craghammer. The city of Craghammer. Wow, it's fantastic. <laughs> we're in. Right? So, yes. you guys Who was at step. The door. We were talking to somebody, right? Yeah, you would talk to the front guards at the, at the gate of Craghammer. They had begrudgingly let you inside, giving you a couple of pointers and a couple of prods, and sent you into the city proper. You made your way through the darkened alleyways and, and stone carved tunnel that leads to the main central portion of the city proper. An enormous underground metropolis sprawls out before you, the dark earth and shadows framing beautiful stonework, marble columns, archways and labyrinthine bridges climbing across the vertical cityscape, uh, all warmed with the red glow of some strange crimson rock peppered throughout the town as a light source. Uh, a large metal forge envelops the center, the center of the cylindrical city, and the entire city is a three-tiered cylindrical uh, city that is built into the ground of the mountain itself. Um, welcome to Craghammer. Remind us, did we did we bullshit our way in here, or did we have papers to get in? Uh, Allura got you paperwork, got paper. so you were able to actually get in this time. But yes. Ashley speaks Dwarvish, Pike speaks. Spike, uh, Pike. Pike, Pike speaks Dwarvish, and she's, and she's not here. She's hey, I, I speak Dwarvish as well. Oh, good. I do. I do. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. fantastic. Um, the only other note, you, the only bit of information you have about the whereabouts of, uh, of her is that she came here to go into the mine, uh, apparently a mithril mine, uh, where this evil is supposedly brewing. You heard that the the uh, the one person who owns the biggest part of the mithril market here, kind of cornering it, his name was the Dwarven Lord Nostok Greyspine. That was the only name that you had in regards to this deep earth quarry. Greyspine? Greyspine, correct. Grace. Well, we, well, we have to go uh, find him, don't we? we I, I think before we do anything, we should find a place to sleep. That's oh, true. we're all jacked up from before, right? Well, yeah, there's wouldn't like a it be city. nice just to put everything down for a little while? Of course, right. I've got a lot of uh, booty that I need to <laughs> I don't stow. Want to hear about what <laughs> good way to phrase that, Scott. Yes. <laughs> also, I would like to check out any kind of uh, places where they might have enchanted labors or whatnot. Do you have enchanted? Can you can you stick with us? You're the with only one who speaks dwarvish. Yes, you're getting just ahead just of yourself. Just stick, um, stick with us. I'm just saying, put it on the list. Let's All look right. around. Are there any are there any uh, dwarves in the vicinity? Oh, there are many, and they, uh, as you finish this conversation, look about, there are two guards posted nearby wearing kind of dark, dark crimson and brass chest plates that have a uniform scar carved across the front. Uh, it's actually built into the armor itself as a design, and they're both just staring awkwardly at the, all of you arguing in the middle of this entry thoroughfare in Crackhammer. Tiberius, uh, make with dwarf talk, please. Um, hello, lads. Um, <clears throat> My associates and I were looking for a place of lodging for the night, and what have you, a place of reputable reputation. <laughs> one dwarf kind of shouts over to the one and says, You hear that, Jameson? I'm looking for a place to stay. I heard that right. It's about time we had some new folk in town. <laughs> well, if you're looking for a place to stay, <laughs> so your best bet would be the pig pits. That this is that the name of a place? <laughs> yeah, certainly, the pig pits. All right. Ask all for the pig pits that we show them around. That's, so that's actually where you're pig for pits, isn't it? I know, I feel, like, I feel like we're being hazed. This what? No, no, not at all. Sure this, this is all in common? This is all in common. Okay. Which way to the pig pits? So. Uh, pig pits are that way. He points over the edge and you see down past the central uh, forge structure in the city, to the very, very bottom nearby, what looks like a large temple that envelops the larger, uh, or the bottom floor of Craghammer proper, there is indeed a distinct slop of mud, mm. and uh, yeah, where internal food. livestock are being kept give for food. Give him some shiny. I bring out a piece of gold. Yeah. Mm, gold. <laughs> Please, oh. uh, we're looking for a place to stay that isn't covered in mud. Oh, well, it's good to see that at least one of you speaks Dwarvish. <laughs> <laughs> takes the coin, kinks it in his teeth, and goes, all right, now, if you're looking for a proper place to stay, you're going to look for the Iron Hearth Tavern. That is just to your left, about that way, no more than a half a mile. Keep an eye out, listen for the laughter and the people who are very, very drunk. That's your best bet. Thank you, sir. No worries. The rest of you... armor, by the way. Hmm? Well, thank you kindly. Is that a wink? It was. That was a wink. That's all she does. All right. So all I do is wink at people. It's a nervous tick, really. Yeah, works. it's a feat she took. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you progress to the... Uh, the western side of the Craghammer rotation as you kind of curl around the central platform, uh, making your way eventually to the outside of this rather large central tavern inn. As you walk up, you can hear music playing, 
You can hear laughter and boastful cheer. You could hear some arguments in the distance. It's, you can hear it from a good two or three buildings away. This is definitely a central social environment here in Craghammer. Um, as you walk inside, you let me get some proper tavern music here for you. Oh, <coughs> I think smells in here. Mm. Indeed. Um, uh, some roush, some 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 loud, boisterous <laughs> drinks being clinked together. As you walk in, the first thing that catches you is the scent of stale alcohol and it smells like smoked wood of some kind. Yes! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are tables, uh, most of them in decent condition, but some of them half broken and repaired, probably for some previous uh, encounter in the bar. In the center of the room, there looks to be a not currently in use, specifically built brawling circle. Ooh. Um, it's about maybe <laughs> about, about 30 feet by 20 feet. It's more of an oval. And uh, it's not in use currently. An octagon? Essentially. How high uh, uh, is the ceiling? Can Grog fit in here? All right. The ceiling, the ceiling, the ceiling actually is considered vaulted ceilings for dwarves, so it runs at about seven feet. Uh, for Grog, it's an uncomfortable, yeah, like enough. almost scratching your head across the top. Um, <laughs> and as you enter, about uh, seven or eight of the nearby dwarves at the front door go, <laughs> just look immediately at the ragtag non dwarven group that just kind of stumbled into the center of the tavern. <clears throat> Just what are you looking at? Well, it's not very often we catch someone with that kind of a mug on you. Let me buy you a drink! Come sit down! Oh. My kind oh. of people! <laughs> see you later! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a drink. We grab a table next dwarves. to the, uh, the dwarves mm. with Grog. Alright, uh, both book. tables next to the table they're at are completely filled with oh. dwarves. Alright, um. I take uh, a sack of gold out of my own pocket and slam down the table. A sack of gold? Are you crazy? Gentlemen and uh, <laughs> gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are traveling from far away. We've just arrived from Iman. Uh, we are uh, fascinated to see your underground city, and uh, to celebrate the occasion, I would like to buy every dwarf in here a round. <laughs> Bartender, the music stops. The conversation <laughs> stops. <laughs> All dwarven eyes turn to the table, and they all turn to a single dwarven woman at the back who's behind one of the bars, uh, who has a towel over one arm, and she's kind of looking around. She's staring, confused at you, and all eyes are on her, and she goes, Well, it's about time someone around here had some generosity. Certainly, pay up front drinks around on this half elven gentleman. Let's go! Yeah. 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 Make a rage. <laughs> I'll need your largest bowl of ale for this one here. Cask, 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 oh, please. Ale. Cask. No worries, Adra's got your back. Be right back. And she wanders off to the back room, uh, comes back and starts pouring, just, just stein after stein after yeah. stein of ale, like the big Keep barrel set up on top. Looks good. You do notice uh, that she is definitely the head of this tavern, and all of her bar keeps are male. We don't um, yeah. And <clears throat> seem to be worked rather ragged. What was uh, Excuse me, uh, uh, miss, uh, yeah, get her. you. Adra, yay! Uh, I'm sorry, what? Adra. Adra, uh, you run a fantastic establishment here. Right, I do. Uh, thank you for welcoming <laughs> us and allowing us to, to buy this round. We really. Patrons that come in and drop coin like that are welcome anytime. Well, uh, thank you for your hospitality. Uh, uh, you, m might we inquire about staying here the night? Do you have an inn with your, this tavern? She reaches below and pulls out a big tome and starts thinning through it. You know, actually, we have openings right now on the second floor. Uh, several rooms or just one? Do you need them side by side? Yeah, that would be nice. I could probably muster that. I'll push him into <laughs> Something seven. with a little bed for me. Child! One of the dwarf uh, bar maiders. Uh, can I look Hey. Get Stetson out of his room. Move him to the third floor. Nice. They've got to open a block for our new guests. Hey, oh, fine, fine. And the older dwarf kind of stumbles his way up the stairs begrudgingly. Um, Right, so if uh, I can get a room for each of you, we're looking at eight rooms separately, that will run you per evening about 25 gold pieces. Does that sound about right? <laughs> to to uh, 25 total. 25 total. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to share a room? Yeah, we can. I think we'll, we we'll can bunk probably up. bunk. Uh, we can bunk. Grog, yeah. you and me. Scandal you might just so yeah, share room. sleep on your feet. Let's I don't know. Like, like, or on the women. Like 15 gold then for. You know, just that amount. She visibly deflates a little bit, but it's like, all right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Five rooms it is. <laughs> that 15 gold per room. So We're how long do you expect to stay? <laughs> yes. How long Thank do you expect to stay? Oh, uh, at least a few days. Let's say it a, a week. With oh, an okay. indefinite hold, we are, we are, we have business in the city. Right, yeah. well how about we pay the week in advance and I'll give you a discount? Uh, I love discounts. 
Just wait, 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 wait. Here Just comes the Just haggler. do it. I thought we were going to be heading south, like... Let's um, say the 100 gold for the week. All five rooms. Not particularly with you, Damage. Mm. We're pretty flush. I yes, think we can handle that it. That works. Alright, this doesn't terrify me. Get, get the I think I did the math wrong. That is... I was told there would be no math. Sounds good. How we'll take you? it. I hate it. not having a calculator. Do it. Do it. Fine. Ah, glorious. That's she pulls horrible. back and pulls some keys out and hands them to the rest of you. Hands you some paperwork. My math that shows you quite which rooms are yours. And says, hey, you're welcome to stay all your life. Ask questions. Have a bag. Um, just make sure you don't exactly. do anything stupid near the cars. Near Ooh, the, near like the I do things like that all the time. <laughs> Sorry, our dwarvish is a little thick near the... The carvers, the carvers. The carvers. The carvers. The carvers, the carvers. of course. The carvers? The carvers. The carvers. Oh, is this is your first time in Kragan. Yes. 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 The carvers are the guard that run this city. They're the ones who keep the law. The scar. Yes, the armor, the carvers. Yeah, what is the carvers? Oh, oh, the, the carvers. At which point, she kind of leans back and, and, and as, as he reveals the rather gnarled scar on your chest, she reels back a bit and two nearby dwarves go, Hey! <laughs> 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 they start showing their scars and it's like, Oh no, I got this one from a bad iron bolt! And then they start talking about different creatures they fought. Um, she, All right, well, uh, just the carvers are a bit of a sort of a, how do they put it? A military class in this city. Uh, they run a very tight ship in the streets, so just be careful. That shouldn't be a Thank problem. You. We're, mostly know. we're just looking for, for Lord uh, Greyspine, if I yes, recall. We just have business with him. We hey. might have business with you if you've seen a halfling come through. She thinks to herself in this. I don't know, there was, there was a halfling woman, but she was staying at the Firebrook in. The Firebrook? On the bottom floor for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And where? Let's talk about her. She, was a, she got in a few fights herself. Oh, oh the silver armor, that one. Yeah. yeah she was a firebrand, if I ever I saw one. Oh, right in my alley. I like that one. How long ago would you say this was? Oh, she's been for a two, few weeks. I haven't seen her recently. Thank you. Perfect. Is there a, um, is there a champion of the uh, circle oh, of fighting in the town? <laughs> is there a reigning... Already, Grog! Well, I have to know these things. <laughs> she, uh, he has to know something. Oh. <laughs> she turns the, uh, the barrel that she has on the table towards you a little bit, and you can see the actual symbol, this kind of burned uh, image on the side that says Balgus Brewery. Mm -hmm. She goes, that would be Bulgus. The one who supplies us with what you're drinking. He's the undefeated champion. But I don't think he's quite right to fight at the moment. And she points towards the very edge of the bar, and you see one older grizzled dwarf, long gray hair pulled into straight braids in the back, big bushy beard that's all shoved up into his face because he's asleep, drunk as a skunk on the edge of the bar. <laughs> oh, I a dwarf. <laughs> Maybe we'll use him as a mercolator or something. <clears throat> or we'll, another time, then. Another time. Another time. <laughs> Save it for a rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> is it rainy? I don't what think do they have say? rainy day. Is that gray spine? Yes. Yes, yes gray spine. Oh, that's what <laughs> he did. We're looking to set up a meeting. No stop. No stop. Which gray no spine? Uh, Nostrock? Nostrock. Nostrock. Gray spine. Gray spine. Oh, he's, like that. he's definitely a business type one. Well, well, who's the friendlier gray spine? Oh, friendly of the types would probably be the head of House Grayspine. Wait, 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 wait. How many gray spines are there? Oh, there's probably several at this point. I've lost track. The family line's been going for a while. Okay. However, of House Grayspine, currently, uh, Iron Keeper Graven Grayspine is the head of this entire city. Oh. Uh, voted in ten years now, actually. He's head of the council. Iron um, Keeper what? Iron Keeper Gradim Grayspine. Gradim? Gradim. 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 Learn to speak the language. <laughs> I understood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adra, may I ask? Obviously, we have no dwarves in our little party. Unfortunately. Um, Unfortunately for us. Sorry about that. Um, how You're very welcoming. Uh, we appreciate that. How welcoming would you say the city is to outsiders? Are we going to stick out like a sore thumb? Probably. Um, <laughs> as long as you don't do anything stupid, I think. And as long as you keep the coin flowing, and as long as you stay to the upper levels. The lower levels, you get to more of the business, the, the miners, the forges, the, uh, the foundries. The that's When you get to the business area, that's where the guard gets heavier, and that's where folks don't like you poking the other money. Yeah. So the lower Rough levels would have the mithril mines. The Mithril Mine. There's one. There is one now. It's all been current, well, has been for quite some time, completely helmed up and run by House Grayspine. Uh, the Keystone uh, 
quarry is what you're looking for. Like, but we're not really interested in that. We just of want course to see not. the city. Our business yeah, is elsewhere. Well. That's a uh, not all that proper business uh, credentials on that. You'll end up being questioned. Don't we have a look? Sounds like a dirty business right. anyway. Yeah, you got to <coughs> stay away from those miners, Scanlan. That's yeah. a dirty bitch. She gives you a look, almost like it was a slightly racist <laughs> statement, but then kind of passes it off because you paid her a lot of coin today. <laughs> <laughs> so, racist. It's a little racist. No stock. No stock? Mm. No stock. No stock, Grace. Fine. Yes. You said that he's kind of a... Mm. Oh, th th there's a reason he's the one put in charge of the mines and the business, isn't it? Um, Boundaries. Where mm. is he located? Um, well, if he's not home at the actual... Uh, Grace by Manor, oh, which is a right. sprawling house that contains old ones over there. We're going there. Mm. Uh, he's probably down at the actual, uh, at the, what is it? Have a minute with me. Can you my notes? Oh. Um, he's probably down by the uh, the Grace Spine Quarry itself, keeping an eye on the business there. There's a, a nearby dwarf at this point, kind of near, just having a few drinks, goes, Oh, Grace Spine, there's been troubles around there. Apparently, a friend of mine works there. Got a big nasty scar last week. Wouldn't even pay him for his time off, do you? It's bullshit. <laughs> Slams his drink down on the table. How down at the quarry? Mm. Hey. How did your friend get this nasty cut? He works there. Said there were stinks pouring out of the caves. <gasps> goblins what kind and the of like. Goblins? Yeah. Goblins are nothing. Of it's, course not. Says there's something like that in goblins poking out through, so. Just saying, that business is in for a serious problem. Does this your friend ever have drinks here? No, he's been sober for two years. Oh. I'm not friends anymore. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna tug his beard a little um, bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think. <clears throat> Lots of process. Pours another drink. Of uh, which point, <laughs> Adra slaps his hand and says, "Hear that? He bought one round." Was, ah, right. Excuse me. Finishes the drink and walks. One thing, uh, Adra. Uh, uh, are there any mystics in in this particular town? That there's study any arcane arts? Waiting towards are just a baseline folks who brawl each other. I have oh, it, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I haven't met So them. many racist comments. <sighs> Jeez. But what, you're, what you're looking for is how Thunderbrands. They're the ones who, uh, by blood, have the arcane arts in their family line. Interesting. Uh, they run most of the enchantment process in the city. Uh, they also train. They call it train. Some of us call it more indoctrination. But uh, they're definitely the focus of all arcane arts here in Craghammer. Mm, thank you. So. Thank you for your time, Adra. You carry on with your evening. We'll seek you out if we have any more questions. Certainly. Yes. Now, if you don't mind, and she scoots you aside as you see a line, a queue of dwarves behind her with their empty waiting cups, like, there. waiting to get to her to fill up the drinks that you bought. <laughs> oh, that's sweet of <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy, gentlemen. What Lady. time of day is it? Uh, best that you can tell inside, oh, you can't. Right. But you just arrived probably around three or four in the afternoon. Do so. Probably pushing sunset right about now. Do dwarves carry the same schedule? I don't know. Do well, does anyone know? There's, There's only one way to find out. Make an intelligence oh, check. Oh, oh, cool. I'll roll it. First oh. die, roll it. Nice! That's 18 a plus, what is that, investigation or insight? Uh, this would be just a straight intelligence roll on this one. So uh, just your general knowledge of dwarves. Uh, oh, 20 then. 20. That's not too bad. Right. That's not too bad. <laughs> um, in your experience, you know dwarves, depending on their lifestyle and what they do for a living, mm -hmm. they're clocks can run differently, but for the most part, uh, they run in tandem with most other races, just because it makes it easier for dealing with outside forces. But, um, like I said, it's very variable. There is no like set lock time of like, this is morning, this is evening. They just kind of sleep when they need to and wake up when they need to. All right, good to know. It's like living in Alaska. Kind right. of. Should we go to the fire? Dwarven in Alaska. Dwarven Alaska. I think, uh, yes. Yes, no fellows, well, what should we do? Oh, what check out you know? the fire. No, Alaska. Okay. No, yes. Alaska. The fire, uh, that was where, uh, that was where Lady, Lady Kimmy, 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 Kimmy was, was staying. Was and also, us. I think somebody should run reconnaissance on um, Grace Vine mm. Manor. Mm. Like, yes, no, I don't right. think we should try to go directly to the mines and find Nostar. No, no I agree. Maybe we should enlist the help of a dwarf here in the city to introduce us to Nostar. I mean, we're not trying to raise hell or bring down a thousand dwarves upon us. No, and there's no. no sense attempting to be subtle. Although that does sound like fun. <laughs> Everyone's going to know that we're here and what we're looking for. Yeah. By Why don't we get old drunky Greybeard that's got his face down on the bar to do it? He's very... Well, let's ask him. Maybe he's drunk enough to help us. Saddle up, Grog. Me? People seem to like you here. Yeah, but I'm really... T oh, that's You're true. You're the connoisseur. Yeah. Maybe I'll part my armor. Go show him his scar, scar, see what he does. Post up on the bar. Take him, him a drink. 
All right. Take him a drink. Uh, I would love yes, to uh, get a, 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 uh, a very large drink. A mm-hmm. very low, the largest goblet you have of ale, and I would like to go over to what was his name, Bulbous. 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 I had it right. Bulbous. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to. Um, I'm coming with Grok. Bulbous. Yes, and I would yeah. like to go up and put my scarf and post up on the bar and. <clears throat> <laughs> I take out my flute and I play a little uh, healing word spell Aww. and try to heal him of his drunkenness. Just a little oh. of his drunkenness, not yeah, all of his he drunkenness. Likes drunk, so all right, yeah. so uh, mm-hmm. as, as you play your tune, a uh, beautiful little tune that saunters through the air, the magical energies emanate from the notes you make, kind of drift into his torso, you can see a slight glow, and he kind of... <laughs> Where's that blasting music coming from? <laughs> his hand goes out the paw towards the flute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that was coming from. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry to disturb you. Your name is of a great repute around these parts. He wipes a globby old drool that's kind of crusted into his beard. Well, that was. Hey, you bothered me not. What you want from us? Oh, we were wondering if we might perchance acquire your knowledge about town uh, for a bit of a. Search. What to talk to him about fighting? Right, I hear you're a good fighter. You look <laughs> strong. I've heard the same. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> how often do you get challenges in this tavern? Uh, as often as I get woken up from my sleep. Which is never. <laughs> because only stupid people do that. Boss cars, abandon ship, abandon ship. Right. I have an intelligence of six. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, <laughs> there is a very pretty lady over there with slightly pointy ears. Talking about you, weren't you? There's two of them. And they were actually wanting to ask you a question, if you would. Make a persuasion. Oh. Why? Me? Yes! Doing this? Throw it to us. I know, why didn't... Well, I was <laughs> because gonna you were failing. Because I was going to throw boobs at him, and Bins I wasn't going right. He realized he was sinking. That's the little time you get that. All right. Persuasion. <laughs> Oh, good roll. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, look at that. Nine. One. Nineteen! Woo! Nineteen, yeah. Takes a moment and kind of... Grabs the drink that you prepared from his hand and just... Okay. Nice bowl. You've got five minutes. And he kind of stretches his back a bit. You can see this like gnarled hunch that he holds in his physical posture. Kind of flexes in a bit. And now you can see the rippling muscles that kind of show beneath his Whoa. tunic. This is a built dwarf. You don't know what past he's had, like moving boulders or forging crazy iron shit, but he's. There's a reason this guy has a reputation. He's, he stands up off of his stool, which you can now hear crack with the weight of a dwarf, which are made for normal dwarves. This guy's a solid muscle. And he starts kind of saunters over. He looks about for a second, almost like he's looking for his next target. Sees the pointy ears. <laughs> sees the me. pointy ears. He goes. And just saunters up to the table, slams his hand down. Why is he coming towards us? I told Why is he? Because you're supposed to ask Boobs. Him. What is Boobs. Steady as she goes, ladies. Sits down. You're better at this than I am. You have called for Bulgus. Why? Oh. Hello, Bulgus. Hi. You're so... Bulgus. We just heard you're so impressive and masculine. <laughs> yes. We really wanted to talk I to you. I use my earring of whisper to vex. <laughs> Cool, oh. it, cool it down. Oh, sh- okay. Calm down. Not Got so it. sexy. Don't just be <laughs> tough. I, I reach out and I stroke his bicep. Oh, Jesus. God, I, was, I oh. can't hear that. I use it again. I'm like, what are you doing? Okay, let's stop doing <laughs> that. <laughs> I disagree. Roll well. Roll well. Roll so good. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> low in <laughs> charisma. <laughs> <laughs> really awkward. Uh, persuasion. Oh. oh no, what was it? I rolled a two? It you know, my friend! Yeah. Plus my persuasion of zero? <laughs> oh, Why am I not charisma? talking to you? As, as your arm reaches for his bicep... I didn't say anything, I just touched him! As your arm reaches for his bicep, his hand, with <laughs> belying his grumpy, half-asleep haze, with unnatural speed, reaches out and just slaps your hand aside. Not painfully, but just... No touching the drunk dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Sorry, pardon my friend, Bogus. She's just so impressed with your <laughs> muscles. We've heard amazing things about you here. Have you? We have. Tell me what have you heard. We've heard that no fighter can match your 
You are correct. You are correct. We've heard that you know more about this town than anyone else. Uh, I've been there a bit. Yeah. I bet nobody knows more about the Grey Spines than you do, and, and uh, they've been around a long time. That lot of political ass minds is what they are. Ass minds? Not a keen to them. Ass minds. Oh, okay. Ass minds? <laughs> they've got minds of an ass. Oh, yes. Okay. Ass oh, minds. I thought you meant like minds that. Ex sorry, go ahead. No, ass minds. Yes, they have ass minds. Grey Spines are no friend of mine. No, I've heard the terrible. What do you do, Marcus? What do I do? It's I own the brewery in town. <gasps> You do? The only one. The best brewery. Uh, the only. Of course it's the best. I put everyone out of business. We export to most of Kaldori. Oh, this ale is amazing person. that I'm drinking right Damn now. Damn right it is. You sit it down and he takes it from your hand a little bit, takes a sip of himself <laughs> and sets it down again. <laughs> <laughs> so it, um, <laughs> it seems that you uh, aren't challenged often in business and in fighting. <laughs> I saunter over. Uh, hello! Oh, oh, my name is Tyler. We're all gonna die. Oh, 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 we glance at Dragonborn. Ah. Oh, I haven't fought one of your kind in a long time. Oh, who was the last Dragonborn you fought? Do oh. you remember his name? I recall his name was Broken and Bloody. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a friend of yours. No, I know the, <laughs> I know the Bloody family. They're terrible people. Anyway. My associates and I were wondering if you would. I, come, is that what we're doing? Trying to get into. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, uh, we're trying to find out more about uh, uh, Grey Spine. Where yes. he might be. Who his associates might be. Gee, I'm so glad you came. <clears throat> would you like to accompany us on this journey that we're taking? Oh, God. We're trying to find the Grey Spines, <laughs> and you seem like you would want to come in on this. We think there might be something rotten in the mine. Make a persuasion roll. Oh you can boy. Assist I'm assisting in this persuasion oh, roll. Good God. I just need to get some shit. Oh, I get advantage? No. no. 20, 21. Yeah, so, so, so you get advantage. So, so you roll, roll twice. twice. What was the oh. first thing you rolled? Three. Three. And I'll take the 18. 18. Right. Definitely take that 18. Oh, plus my... Persuasion. Uh, so it looks you keenly with... Which is a nine. Which is a nine. Yes. What? Whoa, you have a nine persuasion? That's why I can't. pretty charismatic. He goes, well, no, I don't... I really want to go anywhere with you. Oh, but if you're looking to go ahead and talk to the Grey Spite, you don't want to go empty handed. No. It's customary to come with a gift of some kind. Oh, really? What uh, mm. might they like? Well, let's just say I have the finest brewery in the city. Oh. And I have some fine, very rare, very exotic drinks that I could perchance sell to you. Mm. Hey, the dwarf. How much for this exotic ale? I will so take you one ten. Ooh. We want to get in the door. We want him to like us. I can give you the finest of Thistle Branch Dark Blood Wine. Mm. This was crafted by myself from a rare Blood Thistle Branch that I had brought over from the far off city of Kamorda. This I personally oversaw. It took me four years to fill this barrel full. It will cost you. 500 gold pieces, but is a king's right wine. Can I do a persuasion check, or a uh, perception check, see if he's lying? Just be inside. Go ahead and I'm inside. An inside check? I'm going to walk over to Grog really quickly. Oh. Oh! What's in the bag of him? Um, 27. He seems Ooh. too drunk to lie. Let's okay. just do it. And I'll tell you man. what. Perhaps he would but is it maybe... worth 500 gold? Mm, probably. Bets. We have some very put forward a wager. items with us. In the novel. I think you might be interested in. Make it quick. You've got one minute. Do you We've have any thoughts on this, Grog? We've got... What? Well, My time's far worth the 500 gold you've already been talking about. We've got yes. this. Seems like it. Uh, with us right now. We've got a bunch of dragon pieces. We've got... <laughs> Do you like dragon pieces? A dragon. We got 37 dragon teeth, yeah. one dragon eye, four cups of dragon blood, 39 We've got this cup of dragon blood, which I know. Drog. Battle can be wager. added to ale or wine and makes it quite sensational. He takes the, the sealed cup and sloshes it around in his hand, and you can see the the actual liquid is really coagulated to such a point that it's it's less of a blood and more of a more of like a gelatin. It's a <laughs> Right, it's it's a, mm. a spoon of it. He peeks open. Oh, yes. I think that's really expensive, actually. I can have this appraised, but if you want to do a straight trade for the battle, like this, 
Take your whole lot. Just go for it. We have four cups. All right, fine. One cup of it. We have four cups. Yeah. All right. Takes the thing. Takes the cup. Kind of puts it into a small satchel on his side. Adra! Hey, what you want, you drunken bastard? <laughs> They've bought me thistle blood wine. Take it out back. Here's the key. And he tosses her a key. And she grabs it. Goes, really? Just walked in. They're playing fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Comes back with uh, two other of her barmaiders who are begrudgingly carrying it with her. It's a nice barrel. It actually has like a gold trim. The actual uh, bands that hold the, uh, the wood together is in itself gold. The, uh, the the branding on the side is gold leafed into the wood. It's like fine, fine, exquisite. We're talking like top shelf Bevmo style, awesome dwarven wine. Top so shelf Bevmo. Bevmo. Pats it. Pats it. Pats it. Oh, yours. If this doesn't get you in the door, I'll eat my shoe. Have you ever done that? And, uh, where... <laughs> Maybe. Where might... Forget all that. <laughs> where might that door be? Uh, minutes up. I have to ask around. But we're going to do business with you. And he gets do. And walks away we from the table. Bag, I put it in the bag of holding. It does okay. not fit in the bag of holding. What? The barrel is too big. You barely you got, can carry you barely got Dork the Ox Strap in there. Strap that to your Which for the record, they did but fit a small did. ox into the bag of holding and then realized later on uh, that there's no I feel lost. Um, I feel like we weren't going to discuss that. I felt I felt that that was in the past. Maybe if we uh, uh, never drank some of it, it would fit. The barrel. It doesn't work like that. Oh, yeah. No, we actually got rid of the troll deck. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should we trade the troll deck for something? I thought we like sm- we used it as a weapon. I offered it up, and by that time, it had like turned into like a slimy. Ew, Val, Val, Val. It was still I thought we threw it at somebody. Can I stalk Azra then, um, and ask her where Grace Vine Manor is? Keep Manor. Manor. She she pokes. She's like, ah, uh, well. I can have him do it. She pokes one of the barmaiders who kind of turns around. This one's younger. He looks like he's kind of frazzled and maybe new here, or at least trying to make his way. He goes, okay, uh, I can show you around. Just follow me outside. Come, follow me. Oh. And he walks out. He's got a little, little like an apron on. And uh, as you guys leave outside, he brings you to the edge of the <laughs> outer walkway of the central ring you're on. Uh, he points across the way, and what you can see is a series of marble pillars that outline what looks like a residential district that opens up and consumes the other side of the central ring of, uh, of Craghammer. He says, so if you look past far in that way, uh, you'll look for uh, the, the, the house of Greyspine. Uh, it's the one that has dark black marble with, with gold tint in the inside, the spiraling vein of the marble is gold. Nice. Um, the, the gate outside is a wrought iron black iron that's topped with a series of, of pikes, and uh, uh, which... <laughs> I kind of awkwardly looks seconding, <laughs> right. not understanding. Um, and uh, the real key point is, if you look in the front yard, you'll see a dwarven statue of, uh, of the, the, the current Iron Keeper himself. So that's where you want to go. You're yes, very helpful, young man. Thank, Thank you. you. So of course, if you give the chance, you could fill out uh, a little form saying how helpful oh. I've been and give it oh, to you. Are there me. suggestion <laughs> cards here? Oh, I would love to. He pulls out a small parchment and hands it to you. It's handwritten with a couple check boxes. You should give oh. one all of us a copy so you will have multiple. Yeah, I have one. Oh, that's fine. Oh. Sorry. Confidence. Just, we have a, we have confidence a needs improvement. Uh, but the rest it all extra. Extra. <laughs> That's fine. Why not? It's what I do, apparently. And he runs back into the tavern. <laughs> all right. All right. Shall we go to the manor? Yes. Uh, do we want to get the manor right now? What time is Wait, it? Wait, we never oh. slept. It's probably five or six. Well, we got to sleep. I'm hungry. I might not want to bug him when he's, you know, Thank having dinner. Because mm-hmm. let's be honest, that gate's gonna jack no, us up. No, stop. It's sick. It's gonna be full of trouble. So sweet. All right. Yes. Let's go sleep. Let's sleep. Wait. Well, um, it's only six. While while before. Well, then we have time to do other things. How long is the short rest? Short rest is around ten minutes or so. I want to take a short rest. We've technically been short resting in the tavern. Oh, we, we, it's it's more of like a post battle, like what was it? Okay, take a breather, bandage your wounds, kind of just set your, settle yourself after a harrowing experience. That's um, more short rest. I'm so sorry. What was, what was the arcane mention? The manor. Oh, what you're light. looking for is the uh, uh, house Thunderbrand. I want to uh, head in that direction. Okay, so you're inviting from the party. Okay. Uh, I'm going to a house going to Brandon if anybody Scandal wants to come. I can't understand you with that popcorn in your mouth. Yeah, sorry. I would like um, to I'm going to House Thunderbrand uh, before going and turning in for the evening. Oh. I've had a nice little short rest, and uh, I would like to uh, ask them a few questions. All right. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Uh, are you? No. We're, we're Is there going. any recon that's going to happen tonight? I think you and I are going to go to Grace Fine. We'll check out the house. Do you need so any help? 
Sure, you can come with no, us. No, I'm. I don't want you to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> say no, we'll stealth our way. But just a moment, Pike. You seem very distant. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Is Pike, Pike, not is Pike okay? Pike, you seem distracted. <laughs> right. Is she feeling ill? She, does Pike, she need to lie down? Pike is feeling. And for those who are, who are, who are curious in the chat room again, once again, like elements of this are house rules, so don't complain. Oh. <laughs> we keep short rest of ten minutes because it makes it move faster. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Pike. Pike is kind of going along. She seems to be a little distracted. Uh, she can't quite understand. She says, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just. I feel like I've been here before. It's hard to explain. What? Uh, um, hmm. What? Anyway, uh, I, I'm probably going to go ahead and rest for the evening, and she heads back to the temple. What is that, man? We'll find out next week. But first, what did she say? Horrors say? in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. <clears throat> Grog and I go in search of a. <clears throat> Lady. Shall we say politely, whorehouse? <laughs> <laughs> the politer. <laughs> well, the Ooh, cleric's house. away in the bar and shall play. <laughs> we need a massage. You find on my car. Yeah. You guys uh, make your way to to the Gracebine Manor. You guys have that your head to Thunder Bridge. Is Grog gonna find uh, someone his size? I, oh no! <laughs> Percy and Wait, I what? spend some time making some really nice comment comic cards. cards. I'm <laughs> going to make some, some All right, beautiful awesome. comment cards. For, what's his name? Uh, his name is Balan. Balan. We're going to make some wonderful Balan. comment Balan. cards for Balan. Oh, Percy is wonderful with calligraphy. You showed me. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you. All right, so you get to that. Uh, you guys do manage to find what's called the Stone's Pillow. Uh, the Stone's Pillow is. The Stone's Pillow? The Stone's Pillow. It's an establishment of, of comfort oh. and ease and uh, will run you both for the evening as you are. Uh, not Craghammer locals, uh, 30 gold for the night each. A bargain. We'll take it. 30 gold! Uh, but what sort but of. Why does everything um, so much more <clears throat> expensive here? Uh, uh, ladies will we find there? Uh, you <laughs> Bearded <laughs> ladies. <laughs> what, what species? The, uh, <laughs> I'm sure the, the madam of the house uh, introduces <laughs> you to a spectrum of ladies, uh, mostly dwarven and very attractive, you know. Uh, you deal with They're not gnomes. It's a nice but. establishment. Uh, there is one gnome, uh, one female gnome. Uh, there are a number of male dwarves as well that are standing at the ready. Um, there is one elf that looks a little shy uh, and, <laughs> and kind of like uh, <laughs> embarrassed that Goliath walked in. Um, yeah, so. That's our choice. That, those are the choices. I'll take I'll the take, tallest one. I'll take a dwarf. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> So you, you choose your lady, you take the tallest one, which will probably be the elf, who kind of like, all right. <laughs> um, as you walk into the shy elf, turns around entirely. She is aggressive and throws you around. Ooh. You got your money's worth. Uh, you get manhandled in a way that you have. Ah. <laughs> You're going to be sore in the morning. You're going to be sore in the morning. Thank ah. you! Uh, welcome to Crackhammer, gentlemen. <laughs> I like all right. Uh, you guys, yes. both. Are you, are you just walking up to the manor? Are you no. doing... No, no, no. We're going to try to check out what it looks like. Okay. See what the guards are like. Yeah, we'll pretend to take a stroll. Yes. Pose as a married couple. Ew, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> just for the purposes of sneaking around the house. I don't know if that's illegal in crack. <laughs> How about we pose as line. brother and sister, creepy? <laughs> 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 okay. You come on to every human orc and half-elf. In the entire kingdom, but but pretending to be my wife for 30 yes, minutes is too much. Yes, it's disgusting, so no. <laughs> You're probably right. He's got standards. Okay. <laughs> so we'll take a stroll. We'll okay. Shop, see what the area is. As like. you enter the residential district, uh, it is dark, and you see the redstone that kind of permeates the area for a low jump below the entire city is now clustered into these kind of street lamps that are throughout the entire uh, location. Uh, as you begin to press into the residential district proper, there's some nice homes that are carved into the side of the rock. There are some standalone homes that are built out of fine stone. You eventually make your way towards a nicer part of it where you start seeing some of the more marble buildings, some of the, like, the more exotic stone work being uh, used in the construction of the homes. You also notice uh, three of the, um, of the guards that are uh, part of the city's establishment there are following you from behind curiously. The carvers. Um, no weapons drawn, but definitely hands at the ready. Okay. okay. Well, we could just keep walking. Huh? We could, that could be bad. Yes. 
We just want to look at the house. And we're not going to go sneaking. Very obvious, Laura! Louder to the mic. Okay. Let's <laughs> say which ones are very obvious about being pretty, so we look like we're just sightseeing. <laughs> All right. So as you continue to walk, eventually some of the dwarves approach. And I goes, point and say, "Oh, look at that one with the carving! It's amazing." The architecture is divine. Divine. <laughs> They're posing as the howls. Let's <laughs> 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 look at this dwarf. <laughs> 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 the marble planks are on this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, you get about twenty more feet before you get. Your phone numbers are wandering too far in districts you don't belong to. What's your business? Oh, I'm so sorry. I I was just so amazed by the architecture here. I I wanted to see the beautiful sculpture. We, we definitely are uh, visitors here, sir. No one has explained, I guess, the rules yes. to your city. We were just taking in the, the, the fantastic architecture and history of Craghammer. We it were told there was a beautiful sculpture down the street of, of the ruler of Craghammer. Make a persuasion roll. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Either of you, whichever you prefer. Uh. If only I was. 21? Oh, that's good. All right. All right. Wow. Well, pretty decent. Good for you. Um. Oh. The guards come up to each other, and the one that was talking to you, you can see now, as you come a little closer into the light, um, kind of a frazzled black beard that's pulled into a very, very tight braid that goes down to his belly button. All wearing the same basic chest plate, long black kind of velvet cloak behind, each carrying some sort of, you know, heavy war hammer around the side of their belt. Steps up and says, Well, just to tell you the rules here, if you're going to go ahead and wander at night in a very expensive district, you don't want to do it by yourself. Because you either have chances of being mugged or arrested. We might have arrested you. Oh no! I'm so sorry! Hmm. Well, do we need protection? And one of them looks over and sees the bear that is off in the shadows oh, nearby. God. I got trinkets. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> cool. Trinket what is, is that like bear doing? Trying here? to keep up with its <laughs> wonderful <laughs> master. Like, come along, Trinket. There's nothing oh, to be yes, scared of. What's a bear? What's a bear doing in oh, no, They all grab out their war hammers. Oh, no, what? no, please. What? He's quite harmless. In fact, he's he's very scared of most people. He's completely trained. He does tricks. He does. Do tricks. Trinket, show them your wonderful shake trick. <laughs> At which point, <laughs> Trinket kind of like. She just kind of shakes oh, her whole oh, body. It looks at you confused. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> and it makes her pause. If you put your paw out, if you put your hand out, he'll shake your your hand. Uh, yeah, see. We want to take a step back. I would not do that. That's all right. I would say if that's your animal. Yes. Don't bring it here. Oh, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> A trinket, head back to that tavern, would you? If people are getting nervous. <laughs> I love you. Trinket begins to walk back. You can see a couple of other dwarves that are wandering, carrying some packages inside. Make a very wide berth around <laughs> this armored bear that's kind of solely moping its way <laughs> through the streets of oh, Craghammer. What could possibly go wrong? He's Don't so worry, cute. he's a sweetheart. He's Bye. adorable. Oh, you hear in the distance. Oh. Um, the one looks like, look, I'll show you to the statue. Okay. And that's it. And you go. Thank you. I don't see many animals, and honestly, I'm, I'm not excited to meet you, so I'll just, let's do this quickly, and yes. out. Okay. Come with me. And he leads you further into the cityscape. Uh, down the road, you end up uh, going through a few balloons. You find one large wrought iron fence with a series of carved uh, spikes towards the top, and you see a beautiful dark marble building with a gold trim. Oh, this one's amazing. Uh, this is what you're talking about, Grease by Manor. What of rich sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you said the uh. gray spines own this one. Aye. It's wow. stunning. We only heard about the uh, the building itself. What can you tell us about the people who uh, live here? Bunch of rich sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can tell actually, that. Actually, actually, the iron keeper's all right. He's been doing a great job. The rest yeah. of the family can suck off. Oh, mm. really? Not liked by the rest of the city, then? Oof. Oh, they have friends everywhere, but I personally don't like them. Their mm. own business break down. They work most of their employees in the ground, oh, in a bone. Yeah, that I don't terrible. think it's how you're in business for, it's how you're in business for profit, but not for Wow, it sounds like they would run the mithril mine, which we've heard is just so hard on uh, its employees. That's the one. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. I, don't, I don't go that far, Seth. It okay. doesn't interest me. 
No more uh, brimstone. Yeah, so I don't we, blame you. We, we prefer the company of good, hard-working uh, people like yourself. We're very impressed with the work the carvers do in this city from what little we've seen so far. So hats off to you. I, I appreciate that. Yes. You know, it's, it's not easy life. You're kind of born into it. And uh, we spend most of our time training, which uh, can get very boring. You see the two of the dwarves that are now about three steps behind you go, eh, eh. All right, Damson, we've got to get back oh, to our so poses. Oh, sorry. Look, we've done it out too much. Just follow us back. Go about your business. Don't want to here at night. And uh, really go. good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we follow for a couple of blocks uh, behind them for Make a bit. sure that they're paying attention to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. They bring you back towards the entrance of the residential district. And then we stealth and Let's go. Let's all. Yes, we can split all. Right, roll stealth, both of you all guys. Right. <coughs> Am I currently being beaten by a whore dwarf right now? <laughs> 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 constitution <laughs> check. Constitution <laughs> check? <laughs> Hang strong, buddy. That's a mouthful. 18. Hordor. 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 Plus Hordor. Two. Hordor. 20. Go ahead. Hashtag Hordor. Constitution check. You have impressed your female dwarf. Um, Are you making a sex check? By, by, yes. yeah, by the I'm middle of hour two. Um, Mordor. That happened. That's the first time. Uh, <laughs> a sex check? <laughs> She's shaking. Mordor. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> so uncomfortable. So that happened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so where did you guys roll? 20. 20. 20. Oh, you rolled a 20, I rolled a 15. Okay. That's okay. Uh, as you guys begin to wander uh, off, they're, they're professional guards. Vax, Vax, you vanish. Vax, as you take a couple of steps. Here, hey, 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 hey! Oh yeah. I told you, it's dangerous down there in the dark. Don't do that. Of course. Where is your friend? Oh, he went already back to the tavern that we're staying at. I was wondering if maybe you could show me around the rest of the town. He looks at the other guards, and they're like, <laughs> obviously fed up with his running, and they—they're not too keen on you guys. Well, uh, you guys hold the post. Tell me about a quick walk around. Thank you so All much. All right, but I'm going to tell the boss. Fine. <laughs> Don't get this chance very often. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I wave off from the yeah, alley that I snuck yeah, into. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, God. You do your shit that you do. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, back to the shadows. <laughs> Tiberius. <gasps> Damn it. You ask around, and it takes a while. Uh, especially as a dragonborn, some folks are like, oh, uh, no, I'm not talking to you. And some folks are like, oh, yeah, um, right over that way. <laughs> and it's completely wrong in directions. It takes you a good, like, two hours to eventually find your way to House Thunderbrand. Um, when you get there, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful alabaster building. A large white dome with small spires built into one of the more elevated uh, ceilings of Craghammer proper. Um, you can see on the outside, there is no gate. It's just an open lawn. Uh, you see grass. You see what looks like normally outside uh, flora and fauna currently adorning the scape around this structure. Whoa. <laughs> well, this is a lovely sight. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to saunter on up to the door. Right. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, Where's my perception? Oh. Uh, five. Five. <laughs> oh, you God. saunter right up to the edge of the grass line. And get one step onto what suddenly becomes visible to you. A rather uh, uh, subtly carved dwarven rune in the ground. In fact, there's a bunch of them outlining the entirety of the grass. Oh. And as your foot hits the rune, you're like, oh, that's a dwarven rune. That's a good uh, voice. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing my Tiberius. <laughs> um, it's close. I'm working. <laughs> uh, go, <laughs> go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw. Uh oh. Um, you throw? got it, you got it, Tiberius. What, um, what, is, what is this? Uh, Dexterity. Oh, just treat. Uh, that's uh, 15. 15? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you managed to pull back to lessen the impact, but a bolt of bluish energy bursts out from the rune in front of you, throwing you about three or four feet behind the rune. You catch yourself. Uh, you do suffer eight points of thunder damage. <gasps> okay. Damn gated communities. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we go to brothels instead of yep. sneaking around at night. No lightning. It's a whole different kind of damage you can suffer. Hmm. Okay. Well, I dust myself off. Apparently, this has some sort of security. Um. <clears throat> Hello. Did anything happen? You 
wait about two or three minutes, no response. Okay. <laughs> two to three minutes, that's a long time. Yeah. Like, I have a feeling they're going <laughs> to respond to the crazy guy. Yeah, yeah very well. Um, <clears throat> what are you two doing? We're making comment cards. We're making cards. comment cards. Yes. You're all going to have comment <laughs> cards that you are important. expected to fill out when you return back. <laughs> Hugely yes. important. To the bar. Yes. Because yeah. what, what was it? Bal- Baldus? 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 Baldus. Balin. Balin was so nice. Balin. Balin. He was, he was so nice. Balls. Dearest Bulldog. Do I see, uh, <laughs> what do I see around the, the Paris? Do I see any large, like, uh, rocks or any, any kind of large, uh, like, maybe pillars, like, maybe rooms, like, just like setting on other things that I could. <laughs> Best thing you can tell in the distance, and it's fairly dark down here. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see that the building itself just has four corner spires around the large central dome structure. Each one of these spires is a very, very thin, tall uh, alabaster spire that at the very top is crested with some sort of a bluish crystal that comes to a point. They're probably a good. 35, 40 feet tall. About as tall as the rest of the structure. Okay. And you can't really tell how far back the structure goes because it, begin- it meets with the back of the cave wall. I'm going to. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna shoot a fireball. Wait for your run. Just right in front of me. Kind of like roll oh. it, like bowling ball. <laughs> right up to the door. Okay. There's um, a baby right there. You are four <laughs> feet from the yeah. door. Oh, I'm four feet from the door? Oh! I don't do that. <laughs> I don't you do that. step back and do it. I'm only four feet from the door. Oh. Well, well, it pushed you back four feet from the room you stepped on. Like, you're not at the door. Oh, Can I, I use that, that. Uh, okay. magical earring you know that we have? On. You don't know what's going on there. Episode one, Tiberius <laughs> kills himself. Don't <laughs> 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 die. Well, I should have come with you. Bowl that fireball, dude. Oh! Is there any more of your comment, Sorcerer? And the one is level nine for a villain, too. I use mage hand, and I knock on the door. From that far away? Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, the mage hand kind of create the arcane energy kind of swirls up and forms this you know loosely hand like appendage that drifts towards. As soon as it crosses over the room where you stepped on, there's a spark of energy, and the hand is dispelled. Damn these runes. Ah. Uh, mm, okay. Fine. Uh, I'll do glacial blast. Right up to the door. Okay. But not to the door. Why? Right. So as you coast You're alone. the glacial blast forward, the ice begins to congeal across the bottom of the floor. As it reaches the front of the room, there's another spark of energy, and the ice kind of forms up against an invisible barrier that's there. And then the ice that's up against the barrier melts extremely quickly, drifting into a puddle of water. Shit. Uh, I turn back and head to the group. Okay. As you turn around, oh, there are cook. four <laughs> carvers that are hurrying towards you now with their hammers out. Oh, going, Jesus. You! You! What? <laughs> they all kind of surround you on all sides. You have a dwarf in each corner. Like, you have attacked one of the great dwarven families of Craghammer. Name yourself and your business before you're under arrest. Uh, Don't speak to me in that manner. I am Tiberius Stormwind. <laughs> I'm snoring after having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Make an <laughs> <laughs> 18. <gasps> All four carvers kind of take a step back, look at each other. Look, we're just doing our job. What's your business? I understand that, and I'm sorry for losing my temper. <laughs> but I was <coughs> just looking to ask questions of uh, particular artifacts I've been looking for, and this house is the only known arcane house I know that I was pointed to. I tried to reach them and uh, communicate, but I was stopped by this stupid rune I can't figure out. <laughs> so I was turning back to get to my tavern to get some rest and, you know, come back and try to contact the family the next day. And then I was stopped by you! Make <laughs> <laughs> uh, 24. I've just arrived in New York City. I'm going to smash the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 the dwarf guards kind of reach the grannies. One of them steps forward, and this guy, you can see, you know, he has like more carvings into his arm. He looks to have a little more rank than the ones, and he steps forward. Kind of ruddy brown beard, his eyes and stuff are pitch black. There's almost no color to the irises. And he was, look, we're letting you off this once, but if you so much as spit in the direction of any other dwarf in the city, we're going to bury you so far underneath the dungeon that you won't see the light of day till the day you rot. You hear me, Dragonborn? I mean, yes, I, my hearing's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> Get on. <laughs> Puts his hammer back in his side, and they all kind of separate and stare you down as you walk past. Good day. 
<laughs> Back to the tavern. Okay. Uh, you, yes. you go ahead and make your way through the alleyways, eventually back towards the building proper. Uh, what would you like to do? I'm just going to watch, that's all. See what the, do I see any security details? <laughs> see who's guarding the place? Yes. There are carvers doing uh, rounds around the city, mm-hmm. uh, around the, the streets, just kind of wandering through yeah, pairs, keeping watch. Uh, you don't see any particular guard outside, but you, so do, you do see individuals moving past windows. There's a little bit of light from the inside, inside. of the building. Okay. No carvers or any sort of guard detail, detail outside the house, anything like that? Not between the gates like uh, of right. the yard area and through the front door. Okay. But heavily, heavily guarded by the looks of what's inside and what's outside the gate? Uh, what's outside the gate, the, you, you're hard pressed to find a moment where the street isn't visible to some carver. This area is pretty well guarded. Okay. You figure largely because the person who is currently the iron keeper of the entire city of Craghammer lives within that building, as well as the, okay. one of the more powerful dwarven families. So okay. it's pretty well watched. Okay. I'm just going to head back to the inn then. Okay. I'm not going to poke the bear. Mm. You all eventually gather back at the tavern. Ah! <laughs> oh, that was your night! That was wonderful, I don't know about you! Oh, I have hickeys! <laughs> 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 hickeys, is that a gnomish STD? Uh, mm. oh yes! <laughs> yes! Mm. <laughs> Crazy, I have some hickeys too, actually. What? 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 And we have comic cards. Yes, so here. This here you go. Well. Here Success you go. all around. Did you, you learn anything, Vex and Vax? Uh, I definitely think we should take the uh, mm. diplomacy route. Places are heavily guarded. There seem to be lots of cars. <clears throat> There's yeah. a knock at the room you guys are currently talking in. Yes. Um, unless, are you in the tavern proper? Or have you no, gone no, back no, to no, we're in a room. I'll room. get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello. Adra's standing there looking a little, oh. little, little nervous. She goes, Hi, uh, sorry to bother you. Is that bear one of yours? <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes, trinket! Can Isn't he adorable? You might <laughs> want to go. And you hear in the tavern, I'll be right back. You head, you head downstairs, and you can see all the dwarves are now gathered around the fighting ring in the center of the oh tavern. No! And Trinket's now inside the ring oh with shit. a couple other dwarves around, like kind of just prodding and pushing it into the ring. No, 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 <laughs> no. Oh my god. There's Roush just cheering, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not even listening to you at this point. Uh, just I, followed, I followed my sister downstairs. I'll come down too. I, 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 I run down oh, I'm with the rug. Okay. As you guys head down, you can see now uh, uh, Bulgus is now up and like no, up no. his chin and like oh, Bulgus! No, oh, Bulgus! Fuck the bear Bulgus. before! <laughs> Trinket, come here! Trinket, come here! Trinket, come here! You are very much allowed to curse. Okay, Isn't that right, guys? Yeah. Fuck yeah! <laughs> right. um, uh, no, 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 and I run into the ring with him. Okay, as you run into the ring, a couple of the dwarves kind of pat you on the back and you kind of get a shove oh, into the ring. Huh. There's now Trinket oh. and you. Oh. Um. I'll take on this bear. <laughs> what? Well, all Make right. a general charisma check. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> Fuck that bear up! <laughs> I'm pushing my way oh, through the no. crowd. Oh no! No, no! What'd you roll? A one. Oh, no! Yes! First one of the series, everybody! First one. So, as you as you rush and you guys come into the front, you see uh, Volgus goes. Volgus sees this, and now you can see both eyes are open, which means he's sobered up a bit. He's, oh no! This bear's mine! You wanna fight two of us? Oh, it'll wake you right up! Let's do it! It's a brawl. I, um, I cast a fog uh, over the ring. Okay, as everyone's kind of cheering up and getting ready, ah! this very thick fog begins to fill the center of the bar area. You can now see a bunch of people wait, what the heck? <coughs> some are coughing, some are like, what the hell's going on? Hey, fucking hell is that? Why is it? Okay, I run gonna... up in the fog, and I tap Trinket, and I whisper in Trinket's ear, and I say, Trinket, I'm tapping you out. And I turn into a bear, like Trinket. What? Good! Okay. Um, and I first wait, wait. First, I polymorph Trinket into a squirrel. <gasps> you can do that. I can. can oh, you can polymorph. I'm or, yeah, no, 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 no. A, a mouse, like a rat, a little like, tiny, like, tiny, okay. like a tiny, like a rat. So, uh, you see the shadows nearby, the fog. You hear that? Like, Come on, man! I'm gonna get me in this. You can see Bulgus, the shadow, just swinging <laughs> wildly in the air, him? angrily. I don't um, know. Yes. You go ahead and you grab Trinket. Trinket shrinks down into a tiny little mouse. And I think, I think, uh, 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 uh
but I'll keep it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Trinket, the little mouse face, the moment you see it, looks very confused. Very scared. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'll protect it, don't And then worry. I bear it for my good fight. Into a bear form. Now, you, now Keyleth's now this giant bear, where Trinket once was. I got my money on Bullsack. <laughs> <laughs> don't bet against the, the enemy. In the fog, I somersault over some random dwarf and pull out my dagger, but turn it around in my hand and whack boulders in the back oh, of the head shit. as hard as I can, just to try to knock him out. Can you see in fog? Okay. He's a really good fighter. Go ahead, the light. Go ahead and make a stealth check. You have, a, you have advantage because you are in fog. Oh, God. Uh, I'm at the balcony, by the way. So you have advantage. You have advantage. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, we're watching my drone. Remember, he's our friend. <laughs> I'm taking a short Don't rest. kill him. I'm taking a short okay. rest. Okay. Uh, Bologus is drunken, kind of mist-covered state. Does not seem to notice your approach. He is swinging wildly, though. Uh, you are. He has a disadvantage attack on you as you approach. One of his fists just swings past you. Uh, that is going to be a, a 12. I don't think that hits. No. You just narrowly dodge out of the way. You can feel the fist just woof, past one of your ears. As you come back up, clutching the base of your dagger, go ahead and go for your strike. All right. Oh my gosh. Go. Uh, come on, Tate Butter. You got it. Go. Go. Oh, that's a new blue. Does he have oh, advantage, advantage on the attack roll for this? Uh, because he does not see you, yes. Yes, oh, thank Christ. You are currently stealthed. That's much, much better. better. 26. That'll work. That'll hit. Okay. <laughs> uh, so go ahead go ahead and roll uh, sneak attack damage on this, of course. Plus the uh, regular? Yeah. All Don't right. kill him! Well, it's, kill it's him. we're considering it non-lethal damage, because this would it's be blood. the base of the, of the dagger. I'm having an blood. ale while watching all so. <laughs> this. You're watching a lot of fog. Yes, and, and I'm like, this is fog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blindly looking for Trinket. Oh, <laughs> Trinket's in my like, where's, where's Trinket? And you see a giant bear there, you're like, there's Trinket! Oh, That's not Trinket. And no I armor. Hug. Oh no. What's happening? Oh, that's You're right. very confused. Trinket now has no armor. It's a slightly different shade. Uh, no, you're close enough, man. Come on, I've been around Trinket enough. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Seven, right at the base of his skull. All right. Jesus. Crack! A resounding impact hits, and there are now dwarves that are like, hey! Ooh! Like all the cheering stops, and there's this this lull, quiet hits. Bogus hasn't moved, by the way. You impact, and it's like hitting a wall, and there's this like this taut. Thick stump of muscle where the dwarf neck is, Fuck. and as you pull back the dagger, his hand reaches up Shit. and grabs your wrist. His head slowly turns towards oh, you, and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus action to disengage. Oh no! Or disengage as rogue. Oh, he's gonna attempt to grapple you. Oh, oh no! Uh, go ahead and make either an acrobatics check. Go ahead and make an acrobatics check as well. You're all right, all right, all right. Oh, that's fine. That's a thirty. That's a thirty. Yeah. You managed to just slip out of his grip. You barely. He was about to clamp on. As you step away, he turns towards you and goes, oh, I feel alive tonight. Oh, bring it all of you. I want to smash a face in. <laughs> There's like a little bit of an ale froth at the corner of his mouth. It's like beginning to trip into his beard. It's quite an awful sight for those that are close enough to see it. The rest of you just see this shapes and movement. Uh, but there's still this kind of like, okay, what's going on kind of a feel. You hear Arden back going, stop this, this is, I can't even see. What are you doing? Don't destroy another table! She's frankly trying to, to stop this chaos. There's now a bear. Um, what are you doing, Keyleth? I'm a bear. You're uh, a bear. <laughs> I'm a bear. Yes, um, what happened? You're a bear. You want anything? What are you doing? It's in the shape of ball gets just like <laughs> in the middle of this fight ring. Um, so do, do some tricks. Do some tricks. Start clapping and like dancing around. Okay, okay, that's a good idea. I go. That's what she tells you. I go, you can I see her as my like dance, trainer, dance, dance, and I'm like, whoa, Everyone's like circus bearing. Gather round and oh, watch this amazing oh, trinket. I'm gonna cast, oh, I'm gonna I start music. playing music uh, from my, uh, my sham <laughs> instrument, which exists. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, uh, a rousing, jaunty, bear-like tune. Yes. Right. And I'm gonna cast Prestidigitation and do fireworks on top of it. Okay, so... You should give me a fez. Now mind you, mind you, this is... Can I do little hats? You haven't done a fez yet. You need to work on that. Oh, uh, no. I'll uh, try. So, so have, you ever seen, have you ever seen fireworks go off in a cloud? You get that little... Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of that above you. Cl cloud, oh, I, light I'll flashing. Yes. You begin singing your tune. Do you give an, give an inspiration dice to her? Sure, I would love to give her an inspiration. Alright, so a, D, a D8 inspiration dice from the bard as you hear the, the enchanting, oh, cool. jaunty, bear dancing theme. Oh, look over there, it's a bear. Yeah. <laughs> bard getting his bard on. Go ahead and make a performance check. Oh, no. 
know. Oh, me? No, she does. What? What? I'm good she, at. You're performing as a bear! Hey! Do you want to add your performance dice? Yeah, yeah, inspiration. Yeah, inspiration dice. Yeah, so the inspiration dice. No, it's a natural twenty. It's a natural twenty. I know, but I know. okay. You know, I want to save it. I'm inspired <laughs> for later. Okay. I will think back. You were to so that inspired. Moment. You weren't even inspired to be inspired for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So in this 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 array of strange puffy fireworks in the fog, you're doing this little kind of rotation. You actually manage to do a bear cartwheel and like slam into the rip, Amazing. but it looks pretty cool. Oh, you get back up. You're on your hind legs. You dance on one foot for a second. At which point, Bog is like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and just starts laughing, doubles over, clutching his stomach, laughing his ass off. Other dwarves start laughing too. The music gets louder, and the band in the back of the tavern begins playing again. There's now this kind of general jovial air restored to the tavern. I uh, I grab an empty cup off of the table and say, "Tips for the bear, right here." <laughs> you didn't get beeline, money for this. Of course. Beeline to the bar and say, uh, "Large mug of ale, please." And as soon as it's ready. Mm, Bring it right over to uh, Bulbous. Bulbous. All right, Bulbous. you guys are pulling through a crowd, covered mist still. You're having a hard time finding yes. your way through the bar, but the people are at least now cheering in the mood. There's still some people trying to find their way to the front to see what's going on because they hear the music and they hear the cheering. Like, hey, what's going on over there? They're pushing their way through. You make your way to the bar. You see uh, Adra's just like really nervous, like, Aah. I can fix this. I can fix this. How? Do go. go. Quickly. Here, go. Just hands you one, doesn't even charge you for it. I'm still dancing. Still dancing. Move. Looking for Bungus in the crowd. Oh, he's still in the center of the ring. Oh, right, uh, no, one, no one's still getting near Argus. People are just cheering off the side. Way. All right, so Bungus is laughing. <laughs> oh, oh, ah, ah, growl for me. Do a happy growl. <laughs> yeah, I got a happy growl. <laughs> oh, it's been so long since I've been outside. Oh, a little, a little, a little tear on the edge of his face. Um, as you approach up his side, arm around his shoulder, <laughs> immediately, instinctively, just slaps it off his oh, arm and turns around. <laughs> take this, take this. You are an impressive specimen, my good man. I have never had a fight that amazing in at least a week. That was something to see. Here, take this, and after this one, there's three more. He's drunk. Yes. You're offering him ale, yes. and he's just been laughing at a bear for two minutes. Make yes. a persuasion roll with advantage. Yeah. <laughs> persuasion, you say? Mm -hmm. two, 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 two rolls. Two, two rolls. rolls. Yeah, you have advantage. Oh, uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you with this big grin, and you can now see his like gnarled, yellow, dwarven teeth. This like railroad of terror that his mouth is. This big <laughs> smile, and he reaches out. His beard just kind of poofing over the side. Grabs it and goes. See, now this is dwarven hospitality. He lifts his drink up and it spills a little bit on his arm. He's like, hey! And everyone kind of lifts up and cheers again. Oh, hey. Hey. Ha, you hear, <laughs> uh, everyone still keeps drinking through the fog. This it's, like a bad, it's like a bad sauna in here right now. Everyone's just kind of fighting their way through. Uh, at which point now, Bulls kind of slaps you on the shoulder, takes a drink and wanders out of the fight ring, goes and finds a table to sit down and begin chugging what you gave him. Why don't we uh, adjourn for the evening, Why retire don't you to our rooms? Oh, God, yeah, yes. and I guess I'll, we can let shrink it. Can Why don't we wait till we're upstairs? Can yeah. I take the mouse? Can I take the mouse? Here, uh, rat mouse. Okay, thing. hi, Jacob. <laughs> oh, is his armor teeny tiny too? Uh, oh, the, oh, oh, tiny armor when, <laughs> if you choose while, while, uh, well, uh, no, polymorphing him, you could make it as a visual aesthetic, yeah. but because it was a quick impact, I will say it just looks like a normal mouse right now. Oh. Sorry, but next time. Next time I'll do one. Well, you're still adorable on. little dog poking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grab. I grab. My little poking. All right. I grab a half of uh, my <laughs> bale just off the table and say, "Dwarven compatriots, we could not have expected a better welcome." Uh, here in Craghammer, we'll see you tomorrow night for round two. Thank you. Huzzah! It's like, hey! And Bogus goes, three more! You said three more! You see his empty <laughs> cup on the table. Yeah. We did say three more. I laugh and hustle over and say, one, two, three, put him in a row for this gentleman right here. She's like, hi, hey, thanks. <laughs> she gives you like a, like a really earnest, like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. you, now, you now have a very good idea of how, you know, a good third of the tables in this tavern are repaired. Um, all right, you guys head back up to the room. 
Yeah, that was like a <laughs> when you got the impact on him. He's good. Oh, Rod's going to fight him. <laughs> I have a feeling that's probably going to go down at some point. Don't be playmates with me. It's just a misunderstanding. I'm sure he's a lovely gentleman. So you guys head back into the room. Uh, uh, which, it's not a holly built for a bear. You're like, you're a hall, your shoulders are kind of squeezing through. Uh, well, each one of your rooms comfortably fits two people, maybe. Oh, like, no. one and a half. So, I mean, Trinket, can, oh, Trinket, Trinket, if you help push Trinket through the door, uh, Trinket, thankfully, are fairly, uh, uh, dwarves are fairly wide folks. The doors are a little, you know, built for stouter folks. They're just not very tall. You actually have to, like, bend through a grog to get into your room. And the bed, on the bed that you lie on, your legs dangle a good two feet off the bottom at maximum. Um, but you can push Trinket through with, like, a one, two, three, mm, poof. <laughs> or you can just carry her through as a mouse and then have her stuck in there. That's all right. Neither of us need a blanket, now. Well, how long can I keep our mouse? Hey, Never Trinket's mouse. a boy, Sorry. all of you, please. Up to an hour. Up to an hour? I believe it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying. You mean, are they, like, stables? You know, yeah, yeah, let me go. Can I go downstairs and ask about stables? Maybe you can stay in the stables. Uh, you have to talk to Edward. She's like, no stables at this establishment. We do have a downstairs storage area where a bear can probably stay in. It's not yeah, too bad. <laughs> Little mouse. All right. Yeah, he seems to think it's all right. Let's go with the story. Yeah, right? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Anything that looks edible, you can eat it. It's fine. That's not true. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll charge you later. All right. So you bring Trinket back down. Do you release your polymorph? Yeah. <laughs> Trinket becomes bear again. Oh. It. it it's. I'd say the room's probably a good 40 feet by 30 oh, feet. Oh, so he's it's, fine. I mean, half of it's filled with, like, you know, barrels and crates and storage of dried foods and, um, and drinking it comes in and starts rummaging into one of the half-open sacks of dried meat. For, uh, 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 oh. That's going to be put on your meal. Yeah. Um, all right, so you head back to your rooms for the evening to oh, rest. Yeah. Take a nap. Anything you guys want to do in preparation for the next day? No, let's get it on. Let's oh, we should give our comic house, cards to I think we should all turn in our comic cards. Oh, all right. Oh, our, our comic cards. cards. <laughs> <laughs> you turn your comic cards for Balan. I can't, Balan. I, I, I can't stress how important this is. <laughs> Maybe we should... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, really. No, it's fine. <laughs> Speak over me. Here, take him the extras. No Something yeah, else. We're going to give him a few sorry. extras so that he can have more comments. You guys are so kind with those comment cards. Well... Well. Perhaps we should all go to bed and the humans back in North Hollywood should take a pee break. Hmm. The humans? The, you, and you, and you, and you. Oh. <laughs> so yes, indeed. Do you want to take a quick restroom break for the folks here? You okay? Yeah. Zach. How's it work? Is that yeah. the show? Folks here might want to use the restroom real fast. Do you want me to play the intro videos again? You know what? Go ahead and play, uh, play some of the intro videos and we'll come back here in a minute uh, to continue the game while everyone rests. And, uh, and these are blatters. Uh, we'll be right back, guys. Hang tight. Commercial break. Hello? Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw. A goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ill. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse. Grog felt only pity for this, <laughs> this terrified little thing. And his disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save saved him. It was the kindness of a gnome cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from Death's Edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, 
Rogue can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches. <laughs> or, or accompanying Scanlan to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ale. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. Under that unintimidating petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. Literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Tal'Dorei, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee-shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways. It wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. Just like that, her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. Every druid leader to be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilbin, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? Percy was the third of seven children, born to a noble family who lived far to the north, in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwood's men. As they ran, Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Oh, you haven't heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. A loner much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the females swoon. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I am Tiberius Stormwind, 
I hail from a town called Tyrix, located in the heart of Draconia, born from a politically respected family. At the age of 15, I succeeded in passing the Sorcerer's Rite, showing prodigy-like control of my magic. The judges and the Draconian High Council were amazed at how powerful my spells were for how long I had been training. At 20 years old, I was the youngest appointed member of the Magic Guild in Draconian history. For the next few years, I almost went mad from the malaise of being a guild member, as it's rather boring. However, one day I happened upon a chamber, unused for quite some time. In the room were stacks of books and maps of the surrounding cities and areas around the known world. For months, I would frequent the chamber and learn of artifacts from legend. After a long period of research, I made a list of artifacts that caught my eye. I brought these findings to the High Council and was told that all of the information in the chamber I stumbled upon was either believed to be fiction or unsolvable mysteries, and hence were lost forever. I found those answers to be unacceptable. A year later, I devised a ruse and managed to convince the City Council to lend support in me leaving Draconia on a mission of peace and diplomacy for the surrounding kingdoms, going from town to town and making friends and allies in and for the name of Draconia. Being a red dragonborn, I had quite the task on my hands in that respect, but it was exactly what I needed so I could explore the world and find these artifacts, as I felt the truth was out there. Some may describe me as buffoonish, but I say poppycock to all that. I am much sharper than most give me credit for. I just don't pay attention to things sometimes. I've also been known to be rather cunning, loyal, uh, happy-go-lucky, and, well, dangerous. I can't help but show my true scales every now and then. But overall, I think I'm quite friendly for a dragonborn. Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vaxil Dan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born by a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. But their cool reception among the elves there never warmed and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother and journey back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash, pressing the townspeople for answers. They learned of the day the dragon came. With their ties all severed, Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough, the way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so many half-elves, Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxildon quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this world were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Syngorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance, and after too many years of disdainful looks, the pair decided to leave his indifference behind and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief, while Vax kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. Hello everyone, welcome back. We've had our pee breaks, we've had our <laughs> refills of our drinks, I've done the uh, uh, fireball, so I think, we're, uh, I think we're good for the next venture. So anyway, the party uh, has taken the rest for the evening. 
Uh, once again, this is one of those weird experiences where you wake up, not because the sun rises, because you can't see it in the mm. dwarven city of Craghammer, right. uh, but eventually you all come to uh, consciousness naturally. Uh, what is your plan of action? Oh, Jesus, we should have talked about this while we were all peeing. Uh, <laughs> we're going to read up everybody, right? Are we going to the manor? I say we have brunch, and we go to the manor. <laughs> brunch. Brunch. I want to have so brunch. Eggs Benedict. Dwarven brunch. I want dwarven brunch. I want the traditional dwarven, dwarven brunch. brunch. Thank you. <laughs> dwarven eggs are very good. <laughs> I tell them small. of my experience. They're small. Okay. So Tiberius <laughs> fills you all in about his experience, trying to get into the uh, house. almost got killed. I didn't, certainly not. I just couldn't get in the door. The Why rude. did you think that after the magic hand failed, that the big thunder ice wave would work? What I thought is I could cover the room with ice and just merely step over it. I didn't think it would dissolve my ice. I mean, I... F- did you sleep? In his defense, there's only yes. one way to find oh, that. That's true. <laughs> well, so, I'll make sure, you know. A good sorcerer always tries all his tricks before, you know, turning around, which is what I did. I knew. <clears throat> And I think we should go back there because I feel that's significant that I couldn't get in so easily. We will, we will go back there. I don't think it's the next order of business, but I think that there's, we're not leaving the city without dealing with that. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need well, to do something with the comment cards? Oh, please. Did you no. not fill out your comment card? No, I did, but I, I know like three letters, so. <laughs> that, I'm sure it's that's like fine. A, F, and A. Yeah, that's okay. That sounds very positive, I think. It's the thought that counts, Grog. Yes. I'm it's learning. The thought that counts. Did you put like a smiley face? to the A and I'll, I'll cover my hand in ink. And that works. Mm. Very good. That, that works shall well. We, uh, <laughs> shall we try to make our way to the uh, the manor then? The Gracefine Manor with our mm. cask of fancy ale. Has <clears throat> yeah. so the light wine. ever changed? Has the light ever changed being underground? No. It is a perpetual uh, low like glass red glass. glow from all the stones that are embedded around the street. Right. It's all jacked up. It's like purple. I feel really sleepy and also very awake at the same time. Yeah, no. No dwarves. So All right, let's do it. Right. Coffee. You guys make your way uh, after your brunch, your delicious dwarven brunch. Thank you. Which is very so alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> yes. On the way there, <clears throat> I'm It's like being in New Orleans for the weekend. Yeah. Every every <laughs> meal is going to come with something All right. alcoholic. You're turning right. yourself into a dwarf. Did you catch that? Dwarf? He just turned himself into a dwarf. You did. The beers went into a dwarven form. What kind of dwarf? What do you look like? He's Are very you a girl? handsome for a dwarf. Oh yes, dwarf. you should be. Oh yeah, a lady what kind dwarf. of dwarf? A lady dwarf? dwarf? I will not do that again. <laughs> oh, you did do that. You did take it as a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. She shot off the penis. Yes. Oh, yeah. going on. That's where the troll deck came from. I, don't yeah. you remember back? I was almost story. raped by trolls. There was there was a cavern yeah. inter- interaction with two male trolls that they had stealthed up behind as a party. I love explaining this to the audience. <laughs> Um, Tiberius then uh, polymorphed into a female troll to try and bugs bunny them, um, not realizing that dwarves who are underground and don't encounter trolls. female trolls. trolls. Sorry, tre- trolls can encounter uh, female trolls often enough to have a one track mind. And so he nearly got himself in a very bad situation. That was remedied by the party attacking and uh, <laughs> Vex over here shooting off the troll's dick. Which then went into the bag of holding, which is yes. yes. for a long time. That's also where the hashtag not all trolls came from. <laughs> yep, hashtag not all trolls not came all from trolls. that game. Not that is all horrible. trolls. Horrible. Oh, God. And and anyway, bring so. It bring it back. Bring it back. You guys make your way to the residential district. Um, the same guards were there who were there the previous night yes. um, that encountered you guys. And so as you rolled up an entourage. Oh. How many are there? Uh, currently, there are four. Uh, I wave it. Uh, <laughs> he's actually not there. It's the oh. two others that were with you. He is noticeably absent. Oh, oh that's Thompson. They come over like, he's been given the day off. Oh, really? Uh, but as you can see, we brought uh, one of your citizens with us to show us a tour of the city. That's you. Uh, <sighs> Citizen, I haven't seen you, but what's your name? Oh, my name is Tiberius Crackhammer. That's <laughs> <laughs> So, like, like Johnny New York. <laughs> so, so, we're, at, we're in Craghammer. Oh, it's John John Hammer. Johnny New York. <laughs> so, what is it? Craghammer, or what was it? Uh, I, met, I met Stronghammer. <coughs> Craghammer is mine. Father's cousin. How side. drunk are you? I've been drinking since I've woken. See, I've he persuasion is. Check. See, he is one of them. <laughs> I had a lot of breakfast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 19. 19. Holy oh, shit. Oh, my. Oh, I hope. <laughs> Tiberius Crack. Uh, all right, all right. Now, I haven't seen you around, but obviously it's a bit early to be that 
fucked up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very depressed, you know. Well, uh, what's your business? <laughs> might ask again. Uh, you've oh. already seen the statue. Yeah, we saw the statue, <coughs> but we wanted to get a better look at it. So we brought this gift for the uh, Grey Spines, and we wanted to present it to them. The two new <coughs> carvers step forward and kind of look at it. Oh, oh yeah. One of them it's is like, really kind of, nice. he's like, oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, if you let us taste a bit of that, we'll let you go. Ooh. Oh, I mean, I've been drinking a I lot mean, of it. Sure. A thimble of it, because is if it any sealed? of it goes missing, is it, is it sealed? Can we tell if it's sealed? Uh, you look at it, it does not have a current, uh, any sort of, of port or exit mm. on it, it's oh. just a solid barrel. Okay. Maybe we can thing. save some for them. If we, we save open some it, them. it'll kind of ruin the barrel, right? Ah, that's yeah. right. So maybe can we, we save, can save you? you a bottle of it <coughs> when we open it inside, <coughs> and we'll give it to you later. <coughs> Check on that. This is a very persuasion <coughs> Should I roll right. that that one that failed me earlier, or my little dice? The little dice. Tiny they haven't never come out yet. Tiny dice. Itty bitty dice. Teeny tiny dice. Okay, that's better. I rolled a 23. Okay. They all kind of look at each other and be like, if you can save enough for all four of us, please do. Bring it back. We're looking forward to it. Do you have any flasks we can use to fill them up? We've got We've stuff. Got okay, stuff. Got I'm just asking. So <laughs> We've got bottles. We'll be waiting, and if you don't show the Duke, we'll go right to our supervisor. Here's the thing. Do you kind of nod? Yeah, yeah, keep nodding. Here's the thing. I don't know if I can save four bottles worth. But just I'll save as much as I can. Just say Why? Hey, I've got it covered. On our father's good name, we will bring you some of this. <laughs> that is... That is... I don't know who we are. That is a promise. Yeah. It's a good name. They all look about each other. Fine. Remember. We're waiting. And they'll kind of look a little, like kind of lick their lips a little. Mm. Uh, they part and let you guys in the residential district. You make your way to the very back. Uh, you can see House Great Spine. Once again, guys, for those who haven't been there before, it's a beautiful arrangement. The, uh, the iron gate around it with the, uh, the spikes at the top. You can see the entire front yard. It's about a good 80 yard walk to the front of the building itself. It's quite a distance from the uh, front gate. And that entire area is filled with like a stone garden, with various small sculptures and and uh, just interesting knickknacks they've collected and kind of put on display as the small museum as you approach the front of House Grace Vine. Yes. Um, you get to the front door, and it's a large double oak door, about maybe 10 feet tall, four feet wide, currently closed. There is no handle on the door. No handle? No. So, uh, let's go. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. Don't knock, knock on anything. <laughs> Things shock you here. Let's go knock on the door. I want, I want to double check to see if there's a bell to ring or if there seems to be some sort of calling Easily enough, you see next to the door, there is a small chain that just protrudes from the stone wall and has a small, uh, bulbous ball at the end. Ding, 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 You can pull ding. it. Uh, not a ding, but a large oh. uh, It is a heavier chain than you expect, and as you pull on it, you feel like some sort of large hammer-like object is slamming into a, a brass-type material as it echoes and resounds within the building. Definitely announcing your presence. Percy, can I try? If you mess. Okay. Yes. It echoes into the house. Just I just wanted to do that once. Right? No, it's not a <laughs> no. It's Should we no. ding dong ditch? No. <laughs> <laughs> Scanlan, perhaps a, a little ditty on the strings mm. would uh, ease our introduction. I'll start singing a, a little jaunty welcoming song. Hello, oh, hello, right. we're here to pay you calling. Hello, hello. <laughs> I don't know what rhymes with calling. <laughs> calling at the very least. Yes, I thought you would go true. right there. Yes, yes. Is it true? All right. Uh, <laughs> you're just going to play the music just for the sake of presenting the answer. Yes, but I, yes, and for now. All right. Um, about 10 seconds pass before the doors, you hear a large <laughs> and one of the doors opens up and you see a dwarf uh, with long gray hair that's slicked back and pulled into a ponytail, a very th uh, small trimmed beard, very proper, Steps out in long black robes. Can I help you? Percy? Yes, uh, Percival Frederick Stein von Musil Kowalski de Rolla III. Uh, you can call him Percy. You can, you can simply call me Percy, thank you. We're here to discuss some business with Lord uh, Grayspine, and we have, of course, brought gifts and our charming company. 
as well as our dwarven uh, compatriot to introduce. Him. Yes, who is? I'm quite drunk right now. <laughs> Gives you an awkward look. Like, <laughs> like a look of like trying to place your face. Uh, just, which lord are you looking for? Nostok. Actually, Nostok. Is he the nice one? I would like the <gasps> nice one. Nostok, I'm afraid, is currently working at the quarry. Oh, of course he is. For, isn't it? Um, if Gradon is here, is that his name? Gra- Gradon? Gradon? <laughs> <laughs> Gradon? Gradon is not taking visitors. Of course not. Um, well, that's a shame we brought this um, this, this uh, half barrel of ale, right? And yes. some very, very attractive mining contracts. But if there's no one here to talk about them, then... Yeah, goes, he's talking mining contracts. You want to go ahead and head to the quarry and talk to uh, to uh, Lord uh, Pippity, looking up again in my notes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know want to talk to Nostop Grace, but he's the one who runs the quarry. Oh, of course. Um, of course. As far as the Iron Keeper himself, uh, I mean no offence, but uh, only official political business. Well, this is definitely uh, official political business, and I will mm. also say, could you direct us to the quarry? We are new in town. Mm. Obviously. Have you not known to show them what the quarry is, friend? I have no idea what things are going on. <laughs> He's been a, drinking since yes. very early this morning. He's on vacation. I have to excuse him. But I must say, I'm having a wonderful time. Yeah. Here. <laughs> uh, you know, friends are in town. He's showing us <laughs> around. He's. What was your What back. was your name again? Uh, the uh, The dwarf kind of gives you a, a subtle look. And goes, My name is Margaret. I am the servant of the Iron Keeper himself. Margaret, of Of course course. you're the servant. You're filled with poise and sophistication and, of course, above all, protocol. I would not (laughs) wish you to break protocol, which is why just some simple directions uh, for those of us who are wishing to do some official business. Be right on your way and your house will return to order. Right. Um, The Iron Keeper is not open to business outside the pre-approved political understanding. Of course If you not. don't have a pre-approved meeting put within a ledger, you won't be seen. Of course if not, but uh, for the mining contracts, however, when we need to speak to Nostop, um, is there any way... I hear it's very hard to get down into the mines. It's very well guarded, right? That's why we came to speak to him here. He kind of leans over and looks at the cask of and says, Yes. Down to the mines, you just have to go to one of the platform, the chain platform poles on the edge of town that will bring you to the base area. Find your way to the mines there. Um, that should be enough to get Nostok's attention. The rest is up to you. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, one moment before we uh, adjourn. Do we want to try to get into this place or are we just going to go to the mines? Maybe we should just talk to Nostok first. And, and ditch this place? Every time no. we break into someone's house, things Nostop, go poorly. Nostok, we're trying That's to get true. to the mines essentially. So. Yeah. I think he's still listening. <laughs> good man, good day. We'll be uh, on our way back. Thank you. <laughs> You've been wonderful. What was this thing? What thing? Thank you so much. We plan on keeping some of this ale and bringing it back to the household. Would you like some when we open the cask? He looks down at the cask, looks up at you and says, I would not turn down a sip or two. Lovely. We'll be sure to save you a small bottle. <sighs> I'm going to turn invisible. <laughs> As he's looking over there, you just <laughs> you are vanish. All right, and I, you can do I, that? I'm sneaking into the house. <laughs> oh, to <laughs> so what end? So what? All right. So <laughs> we are off the reservation. I believe it is all of our business. Well, good day. And he steps back into the doorway and poof, closes the large okay. oak door. <laughs> You're now standing in the foyer of, uh, of House Grace Pine. Uh, a luxurious foyer. The actual floor itself is a fine, kind of dark velvet red carpet. Um, there are tapestries across the walls and small wooden in tables set against the, the, the edges of the, of the, the hallway, this, this, this foyer area that contain uh, sculptures and small vases and, and, and plants that exist underground specifically. Um, there is a large stairway that leads up into an upper portion of the house, and two doors on each side that lead to rooms you no longer can see. I use the earring and whisper. What are you doing, Stanley? What are you doing? I don't know. I, I, you give me twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. <laughs> That's okay. Let's yeah. all step all right. away I, I, from the house. I mean, of course, we can step away from. Does he need like 
to ask if he needs assistance or like a or like diversion. I, diversion. Uh, we can do the thing. Diversion. Diversion. Uh, diversion. Uh, diversion. Modern, of course, all, like we can all talk to hands and watch like, Yes. Ah, fucking foreigners. I follow him where he's going. Okay. My nervousness, I let out a little bit of a fart as we was all <laughs> <laughs> Make a stealth check. Make Why are you making it harder on yourself? Oh, that plus 14 uh, plus I'm invisible. Uh, <laughs> plus 2, 16. Uh, alright, no, because you're invisible, uh, I'll give you advantage on that. Go ahead and roll. Oh, <laughs> Mm, 14 <laughs> plus 2. All right, 16. All right. So, as you oh, no. kind of scamper by behind Mogrim, following him towards what looks like the kitchen area of the abode, <laughs> Mogrim stops and turns. <laughs> rubs his stomach goes, <laughs> and continues walking forward, seemingly unperturbed by the sound. Oh. Well, uh, I'm just snooping around, trying to see if there's any uh, lords or higher-ranking individuals in, in the area. Okay. <laughs> I'll say within the time that you're within the house, you wander through quite a few rooms. There are, there's a, a wonderful uh, music room which contains uh, a number of dwarven instruments that you've read of, and many instruments that you know as well. Uh, you actually find another, uh, uh, what do you call it again? Shom. A shom? Shom. A shom. You find another shom within. Uh, more finely crafted than the one that you have. A gift of lords, if you will. So tempted, but no. Does okay. he have an earring on? Does he have one of our earrings? He did. We all do. No, not, not everyone. everyone. He only made a few. Just, yeah. Who just all has an him. earring? He, he can talk to me, apparently. Yeah, you guys have to... Tiberius, no. tell him to look for paperwork of something. Oh, uh, for the mines. Scanlan, uh, look for paperwork of some kind. And by the way, all of you should be hearing me right now. You all have the earring. Not everyone. Not everyone. You no, no, no. You only made like oh. five or something. That's all right. So you can only afford five. That's right. <clears throat> Do all those things, Scott. Great. Who's talking right now? Right. Um, and, and, and as you look about the house, you, can, you also come across a couple of uh, bed chambers that are locked. Yeah, it's one. Um, it's a pretty hefty lock. I'm gonna try. Okay. Um, you make your way up the stairway, and you can see there's a long hall that leads to essentially a throne room that is uh, still partially under construction, mostly finished. Um, and you can see it actually was an intentional uh, build onto this house. Um, house Gray Spine. When uh, the current Iron Keeper went into office, it seems began to have this room built, and so it's nearly finished. But it's an extravagant room with a large, like stone and dark metal throne. Uh, steps lead up to it, and this kind of raised dais, like pedestal, in the center of the room. You can see uh, a series of great, uh, kind of magically glowing and flickering lanterns across the landscape. And you see there are two dwarves inside that are finishing up the stonework. They're just like. You know, doing various forms of masonry and plastering in areas and carving out and chiseling out pieces of stone to make it look intricately carved in its flavor. Uh, but other than that, the room is currently okay. empty. Ah, shit, there's nothing to steal. Drop a deuce in the bedroom. <laughs> 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 Damn it, Scanlon, just get out of there. What are you no doing? Uh, <laughs> uh, invisible an invisible Max, poo. You have one. Invisible poo. Percy has one. Uh, I'm, uh, I might as well try one of the doors that's locked and see if I can pick it, but I'm not good at that, so okay. I'll try. Okay, do you have, or have you have in your person any sort of thieves tools? I have a forgery kit, a poisoner's <gasps> kit. Yes! Forge have, some thieves tools real quick. Uh, climbing gear. <laughs> <laughs> and a whip. Man, I have one of the earrings, and I say, uh, Scanlon, what, what exactly is the uh, purpose for this little escapade, and will it be ending shortly? Can I reply? You can through the uh, the message-based ear chip. Just trust me that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so do you wish to pick one of the doors? Uh, do it. Do it, try yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to try one. Away. Okay, you have disadvantage on this. Oh. Of course I do. So roll I twice. Watching. Uh, Pike will mourn your death. We'll consider this a prestigious trait dexterity check. 11 plus zero? <laughs> <laughs> you futz with the door for a good minute, trying to bend a piece of like wire you had, thinking to forge some tumblers, <laughs> and eventually get to a point where you're at, tink! Huh? Ooh! I mean, and it broke. Oh. Oh. I can't do two spells at once, so I will give it a give it up, uh, and I'll make my way to the door. Okay, the door is currently closed. <clears throat> I become uninvisible, and I cast Dimension uh, Dimension Door. All right, you <gasps> blink through this small kind of purplish arcane doorway. It brings you directly outside. You guys are waiting. <laughs> It's gonna just pops into view. Oh, oh, yeah. oh god! Oh, it was crazy in there. <laughs> People were farting everywhere. 
It was not me. <laughs> really scandalous. They're building a throne room. There were some locked doors. Man, I wish you could have been there. It was exciting, but ultimately pointless. So let's go down to the mall. <laughs> like to stress again that none of these dwarves are our enemies at all. Yes. yes. We just want to go Soon, have sure. some And that words. we do not have our healer <laughs> at present. We do not have okay. Well, we Understand. do, but she's very distracted. She's There's very quiet. Right. She's right. She wanted feeling, to stay at the end. She's morning. feeling awfully BAFTA today. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's quite the heavy. Well, let's make our way to the mines, shall we? The metal poisoning. The metal yeah. poisoning. Yeah. Yes. Yes. To the mines. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, let's go get this drunk dwarf. Yes, the bard was doing the lockpick from lockpicks. He was fashioning it from wire. Um, exciting but pointless. Uh, all right, so you make you make your way to the uh, the edge of the center ring. Uh, you find that there are uh, long spiral staircases that move to the bottom, or there are elevators that move yes. to the bottom floor. Uh, the elevators are chain based, uh, kind of like like a, a ratchet type system, um, with two carvers there, of course. Um, as you approach one, eventually you talk a little bit. They lead you down there, but once again, give you kind of a look of. Watch your back. We point at the ale and give him a thumbs up. They kind of nod and let you pass. Uh, as you continue downward into <laughs> the lower area, you can see the redstone that lets a lot of the kind of atmospheric glow of Craghammer is used less and less, and a lot of more central torches are now placed, sconces. Um, almost like the stone itself either is just rarer the further down you go, or has less of an illuminating power the deeper into the earth. Um, you eventually reach to the center part of the town. You now see, uh, from where you're standing, a number of large structures in the very, very center of the bottom part of the city of Craghammer. Uh, you can see, uh, where is it? There is uh, a giant domed temple that is made of like golden bronze in the center. Uh, it looks almost like a gargantuan gazebo that has doorways on each side that is currently closed off. No guards at it, though. Um, you do see a number of other buildings. There's a large, large, heavy, heavy looking foundry far off to the left of you that has a, a little bit of smoke that's coming off of it, but most of it looks to be filtered into a giant uh, metallic uh, funnel that is then placed into the rock, almost like all the smoke based exhaust is being funneled outside of the mountain. Uh, that is the closest, that's the foundry. Uh, and then to the right of you, you kind of wander a bit and you can begin to see that part of the uh, mountainside to the far right has that look of a strip mine, or like a number, a large portion of the minerals has been pulled away and is currently being mined further. So that looks like probably one of the better places to look in looking for the uh, uh, the gray spine quarry. Mm. You eventually make your way to the outside of the quarry. You now look down into three large, large pits that just descend deeply into the side of the mountain. This mine has been going for quite some time, and a large chunk of this looks like it may be being prepped, almost like the mine is what's growing crack ever. The more they mine into the mountain, the more they fill the mined area with further city construction. It's this self-perpetuating cycle of expanding the city downward. Um, currently in the quarry, you can see there are a number of large stone dwarven buildings on the edge of it, uh, one of which is the largest of them all. It looks like it's made of a more of a, uh, a black and red uh, kind of iron aesthetic. Some of it's been oxidized a little bit and kind of has that, that rough and tumble iron feel. Uh, and that one has the most guards around the base of it. The carvers are gathered entirely around it. Looking down into the, the center of the quarry, you can see towards the bottom, there are a number <coughs> of tunnels that lead into the, the hillside of the <coughs> Cliff Keep Mountains proper surrounding crack. So let's it's go. Let's walk towards the guards. Let's just do this directly, I think. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, sword, wait, wait, wait. swords Before out. Before we go up, <laughs> yes. I take the cask of ale and yep. I grow some pretty flowers on it, and I make a nice pretty bow, and oh, shine it, it up a little bit, and make a nice bow now. Good work, Eddie. No, I'm just, it looks <laughs> I'm so like a fruit basket. basket. No, it, it does like not look like a fruit, it's not that ostentatious. It's the yes. Ale of the Month Club. This Those year. are some Jesus powerful powers. Uh, in her defense, they probably don't see flowers. Too that is very fair. It's a nice touch. That is very fair. All right. I'm going to take this opportunity to cast stone skin on myself. Okay, stone skin is placed on you. Are you a dwarf still? Are you a dwarf made of stone? You have not turned to alter yourself off, you are still a dwarf. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but stone skin is a concentration spell, so yes, that would eliminate the alter self. <gasps> Okay, oh, so, so you're, you're revert back, back into your dragon form, mm -hmm. rogue self, mm -hmm. the stone skin is in effect. Um, you using your, uh, what's it called again? The Druid craft. Druid craft, thank you. The presentation really for hippies. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Par portions of the wood begin to sprout from the outside of this, this dark wood barrel and form these kind of 
and tangled IED vines that eventually embrace the entirety of this mm. cast with little buds of kind of dark, ruddy flowers. Something that would definitely uh, appeal to a dwarven aesthetic. That's hot. You approach the guards. Uh, of which there are eight currently at the front. Uh, they're Can running I in pairs. Can I see which one of them, use my perception to see which one of them looks maybe the most interested or weakest in accord? Insight. Insight. Which one of them looks most interested in our party? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. That, I thought that was a one, but it's not. It was a 13. 13, okay. Uh, strangely enough, they are fairly distracted, and after a rather Long, uneventful morning. Uh, most of them are just used to being in armor and waiting for any business to go down. Uh, there are a few along the edges that look a little more alert, and one of them is looking a little uh, occasionally down into the quarry, just keeping an eye on the established area. Uh, Which there, one looks like the newest? The newest of the bunch uh, would be the one that's on the far left that is looking down into the quarry as well. Uh, he is a shaved head. Uh, a small kind of brownish beard that looks like he's just starting to grow it out into a nice long tuft. Either it got shaved in some, I don't know, a, a, a terrible college dwarf accident. <laughs> uh, um, you know, so part of his entry to a right. dwarf to a fraternity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sigma sigma. Yeah, it, but, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly thick tuft of, of unkept uh, brown beard that goes about that far out. And it's just starting to be pulled into like a tiny little scruffy braid. It's not quite there, and he probably gets a lot of shit for it from the other dwarfs. Yeah. Uh, but he seems generally like looking at you guys. Like, oh. I work your magic. Yeah, do your thing uh, no, we well, fuck I was just, up. I just. What are we trying know? to do? Well, just... we 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 brought this gift. Um, Person. hello, and we just kind of address <clears throat> all of them, maybe right now. Yes. She's better hello. at this. I'm just going to let her do hello, this. Hello, <clears throat> hi. hello, hi. Hello, hi. Greetings and salutations. Yeah. The the other kind of guards like reach back and grab their weapons, and the one kind of looking to you, kind of like. Oh. Yeah, I, I look over at the. The shaved head one, and I kind of hold his gaze for a little bit. I give Vex a little push forward. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, not yet. All right, um, what's your business? Oh, yes, well, um, we're here to speak with Nostock. Um, we brought a gift for him that's quite remarkable, actually. They kind of like curl up around the uh, the apparent barrel that Grog's holding. They look wary of Grog. Once they make note of the barrel, they all kind of, <laughs> oh, right, there's the shit. <laughs> I have not seen actually drink it. Well, there's been long-standing rumors that this even existed. It exists. And it's and for Nostrok. Mm -hmm. This Nostrok. is a Bogus original? Yes. Signed yes. by himself, I see, on the burn blazing wood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll go talk to him. And he heads inside the building, <laughs> the doors close behind the other guards, kind of encroach, just keeping a very keen eye, each one having a deed on the rest of your group. Um, about two minutes pass before he comes back, and the door opens. Nostok will see you briefly, um, but you best bring the gift. I think of that's course. what's holding his interest. Wonderful. Inside, please. And he and one other guard kind of uh, <laughs> flank you guys as you enter, making sure that you're not left without that appearance. As you're led into the center of this portion of the, of the mine's main structure, a series of long hallways, you can see there's just this general smell of soot and, and ash uh, and, and broken stone dust in the air, a hint of brimstone-ish kind, of kind of a smell. Uh, it's not very pleasant, it's very well-worn and uh, pungent for those of you who are spending most of the time on the surface. Um, as you enter, there is kind of a general dust in the air. A little bit of light seems to peek through from the, uh, the torches, the torch sconces that are placed along the wall. You can see kind of this general haze amongst the interior here. It's definitely a work environment at the base of an underground dwarven establishment used to mine. Um, you're led further down the hallway, it curves to the left, and you're, left, you're brought into a large uh, dwarven study. You can see books lining the walls, there are a series of ledgers and paper stacks on a large desk, and in the center there sits a dwarf with fiery red hair, cut very short, almost in a buzz cut on top, uh, with a long, long, long beard that is not braided, but just kept very smooth and very, uh, uh, not curly, not bunched, it's a very straight beard. He's very clean cut, he already has this kind of intimidating dark glare to him, and as you walk into the room he goes, Okay, you brought me a drink. You have my attention. What brings you to the mines? We should have thought of Well, several, oh. several things, ac actually. Several things bring us to the mine. Uh, my name, of course, is Percival Frederick Stein von Musil Kowalski, the Rother III. You, you can, can call, call him Percy. Percy. <laughs> <laughs> this is his finger as... You have not paid for your pleasantries yet. Oh, of course, of course. Grog, if you would. 
tap that motherfucker. <laughs> you All right. Okay, whatever. I'm assuming you have a goblet on the table. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you pull it up, he pulls under his desk and pulls up a goblet okay. immediately. As you fill it, top it off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Put it at the side of the disc. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Grayspine. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sit down. All right. Is it as amazing as we've heard? It's pretty fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> it takes another long drag. Just, just wa- making sure you all watch him do this. Like this goes on probably a little longer. The pageantry of him drinking this in front of you is definitely kind of a power play. He's establishing uh, some sort of kind of unspoken dominance in the room. Eventually finishes his tankard, sets it down under the desk again. Right. So, where were we? We were here to call upon your expertise. We imagine that we are not the first strangers to Craghammer to come through... In the last few weeks. In the last few weeks. Hmm. We believe one of our compatriots uh, had some dealings with you, perhaps not as... uh, Pleasant as the dealings we were hoping to have. A lady, mm-hmm. in fact. A halfling. Mm-hmm. At which point, as you say that, he kind of gets this grin to his face and goes, I, I know the one you speak. Yes. She's a strong headed on that one. Yes. She's uh, stepped on a few toes around this place. Oh, is she clumsy? <laughs> one could say that, eh? Mm. <laughs> you say you're a compatriot of hers. We're here to mend any uh, broken bridges, so to speak. Or broken toes, if you will. Well, good. She certainly left a mess in her life. <laughs> this strange vision quest she kept talking about brought her into atmospheres. Portions of this city, portions of my business that she has no right trespassing on. She went against cover rules. She broke away from partial arrest, and she went screaming down into the caverns of our mind without my permission, blades drawn on some crazy suicide mission. You know what? We'll go after her. We'll bring her out. We'll get her out of your minds. Great. I'd like that, actually. Good. And we'd be happy to clear out anything unpleasant that we happen to find in there in the meantime. How did there she have... look? Hmm? Mm. What? She looked small and angry. Oh, no, she was. She, she seemed to have some weight to her. She was a. So, so not a looker is what you're saying. She. Why would you? She gives you the strange look and goes, nice. I, I will not discuss the physical. Uh, the dwarves are trying to say You're a feminist. How much <clears throat> would this, um. this task be worth to you? Obviously, we're doing you quite a favor and we brought you quite a gift. This cost us a thousand gold. Yes. Obviously, this lass I just want to you, doesn't she? No, 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 but I know she's probably wreaking havoc on your mind. We've There's... come to correct the wrongs that she's done. We've come to bring her home. It also sounds like there are some other terrible things wreaking havoc on your mind. There's nothing going on. We're fine. We've got everything under control. We don't need your help for that. If you want to find your friend, go find her. Well, you she's know, that's... Still alive. Uh, it's, not it's, take it's, her corpse back. It's it's not help, sir. I'm simply uh, respecting you as a businessman, and as a businessman, I'm sure that you would disagree with unceremonious charity, whether it would be to give it or receive it. We are making sure that our dealings with you are fair and balanced. I appreciate your offering. You've bought your time. Now, if you're here to go find your friend, I'll let you pass. You may pass into the mine, but... If at any moment you cross over to any sort of thieving bullshit, looks over at you. I recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend that you fall down the same path your friend like we did and get killed real quick. I don't take kindly to those who cross on my business. I doubt we could find anything more value than what we've already brought you. We're here to right wrongs, <laughs> and we promise you. Our business is finding her and returning home. And go. Is that our business? Yeah, we're here to right wrongs and right lefts and... Yeah, acting what? And exactly. right comment cards. Wait, before we, like, 
dive into this mountain. I mean, we know there's like ghouls and God knows what else out there. Shouldn't we find out? Yes, we should. Maybe some arcane house could tell us how to yes, do yes, these yes, things. Yes, 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 yes. Do we have permission to enter it uh, within the next few days? Obviously, we might need to be prepared. Yes, do we have like badges? Like, we wear them over so they know. Wait, no. <laughs> I will speak with the men. Yeah. I'll let you down. <laughs> if you come back, they're good on you. Uh, I think our business here is done. Yeah. Very good. At which point, you hear muffled in the distance a loud ringing of a very loud bell. Ding, 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 ding. At which point, it kind of perks up a bit. Our business here is done. Please, shove off. Uh, which way do we go? At dinner. He looks over at the two other guards that are out, out front. Um, the two carvers come kind of, kind of this way. While he's talking, I take a flask out of my uh, cloak and approach the barrel and surreptitiously <gasps> pour yes. a little bit into the... Oh, Jesus. Oh, You're yeah. stealing beer? Yeah, no, 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 because yeah. we have to While do While he's doing that, I, I try to roll distract Let it those guards. Let kill them all. Can I, uh, can I talk to him? Um, roll. Good old Nostok while he's doing roll. that? Uh, he I'm, currently does not seem of the taco type at the moment. You can certainly I'm going to make a fumble. I'm going to you, I'm going to attempt to roll? assist the sleight of hand with with a bit he's, of a fumble. He's already rolled it. Oh, damn, damn it! it. I'm going to fall down roll. in front of Nasta. Uh, oh! Thirteen. I'm going to fall down. No in front chance. Of Nostock. Come on. For what? He is distracted by a bag. <laughs> As you fill your flask. Oh. Flask. <laughs> You hear this loud. <clears throat> ow! Ow! Oh, my ankle! Oh! It hurts so very much! Jesus. This, this is the first time you've witnessed the pristine, delicate, yet well trained palm of a dwarven hand go straight to its forehead. <laughs> I carry the flask over to his cup and refill it and say, In my kingdom, when a deal is set, we drink together. And I would like, not much, but just to pour us all a drink and agree on this. Now surely this cask is weeks worth of drink. Get out of well, my... Yeah, let's just go. Let's just take the flask. Let's just go. I can see that it's a cultural yeah. difference <laughs> in my apologies. <laughs> I, go. Stop it! Just go! What are you doing? <clears throat> You'll want to talk. I'm, I'm on the earring! <laughs> At which point a second and a third bell start going off, and the guards oh. that are waiting for you guys are like... They start leading you outside, and as you make your way outside of the main building, you can now hear voices shouting down in the quarry below. I lean down to one of the guards with us and say, What is that bell for? Something's flushing out of the quarry. Flushing? What is that? Ooh, a poop? Like we, don't, we don't know. Uh, at which point, some of the guards are kind of motioning each other to follow, and some of them start going down one of the tracks that leads down into the nearest quarry below. Let's go with I'm, 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 I'm going to just go, try go, and like, go, like go practically down. usher our guards in that direction, since they seem like they want to go that direction. Let's just see if we can push them in that direction. Are the other workers? Okay. You guys follow down towards the quarry. You ask the guard that question. He goes, I don't know. We've had quite a few interesting things come through these past few weeks. Like what? You already said. Any kind of like small seconds? Things, things I can't describe. Well, we can certainly help. Lead on. Things. Lead on. Is there sir. anybody running out? Uh, not yet. As you head halfway down the quarry walkway, you begin seeing dwarfs start running out of one of the large quarry tunnels. I grab Three. one of them. Well, they're they're quite a distance from you. You're still walking down the side. They're uh. rushing out. They're about a good hundred feet from you. Uh. They start running out, you can see blood streaking down one of their faces. Yes. They're charging out, one of them has a weapon is like limping, and you start seeing small green scampering things rushing through. One, two, three, four, six, ten goblins come rushing oh, out of the tunnel. Uh, we should these attack guys. them. I string my bow. Right. Don't you yep. have like family history? All right, the, the three dwarves that are running out, one of them gets Hacked down <gasps> by one of the goblins, they jump onto him. Okay. Take a shot, right now. I take a shot. I shoot it. Okay, both of you guys roll. Yep. Throw a dagger. On this one, you throw a dagger. Yep. Three of you roll for attack. I'm gonna. <clears throat> Nineteen. Mm -hmm. Uh. Fifteen. Is there a clear area where there's just a bunch of goblins running? 
Uh, there is an open, kind of, almost like a, like, a, like a funnel towards I'm, the tunnel. I'm gonna throw a little fireball right there. Okay. Where those guys are. So you guys, you, you all hit uh, from this distance, because uh, goblins are puny little things. They're still a little small to see, but you're all pretty well trained and pretty hard at your aim. You fire, simultaneously, gunshot echoes through the hallway. Arrow goes flying dagger. You see three, de- three goblins just fall off the, the nearby dwarf. He goes, ah, thank you. At which point, a large oh, no. fireball explodes, killing off about 10 or so of the goblins, mm. and probably two of the dwarves. I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, mm. At which point, the guards kind of stop. Did you like, do that? Yeah. Oh, fuck. And they, 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 they start going, and they see you pulling out your weapons, and they all kind of take a step back and realize that they don't want to die either. Just, well, go if you're going to help, go! Run straight in. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. As you guys go charging in, you can now see a handful of more goblins are rushing out. They're like running really fast. I um, I throw in Tangle up. Okay. Uh, and Tangle begins to... Uh, like in the distance, wherever they're coming from. Okay, what's the radius in that? Like 100 feet. That's, that's the range. What's the radius? Oh, uh, 20 foot radius. 20 foot radius? Okay. So uh, you find a portion of that, uh, of the, the, the central point where things exit from the tunnel. And you see these strange kind of reddish vines begin to protrude and begin to grab you by goblins as they're pull up into this 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 God. mass of weird vine creatures. Uh, at which point you hear you can now see two larger ogre-like creatures come storming out. Oh, <laughs> oh wonderful! Ogres. Everyone hey, run oh. Yeah! Hey, Look at this! Oh fuck! Fuck yeah. God damn it. Oh yeah! Take it. Uh. All right. Uh, do we have uh, initiatives uh, 25 to 20? 27. Oh, 21. Wait, 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 Holy wait, wait. Shit. I Come on. I don't know where you my rolled a 20? I rolled a 20, 20 plus 7. Fuck. Okay, 21 you said? I, I have 21. 21 for Tiberius? What do you get? 1. Oh, wow. Where's my, where's my oh, I rolled well, a 2. It's 6. It's 6 with a plus. Right. Fellows. Okay. I don't like goblins. 18. <laughs> Yeah. You now see Scanlan is usually a jovial individual. Do you, do you His eyes begin to I don't scary. like goblins. Is there anything that you know? Like no. Did we see his backstory? They will all die. You, you, you know <laughs> a little bit of that. Don't spare any of them. Copy that. All right. So. 18. Right. 18. All right. So we have. Uh, 20. 18 too. All right. So we have. Uh, <laughs> 27. Oh. What? Yeah, buddy. I have 27 That's, initiative. Uh, 15 to 10. 10 to 5, 6, wow, oh my god. I got a 3. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, All see right. you didn't three. do... 4. 4, <laughs> okay, so we have... Sudden tax. Max, we weren't ready. We got a three. I have, three. I have, to be fair, I just cast Entangle. It kind of works. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. distracted fine. holding Entangle. All right, then we have Scanlan. All right, so, build us a max in placement here. Uh, as... Your bear is currently back at the inn. He is still? Uh, unless, we, unless we wanted to bring him along. I thought nope. we brought, I thought well, I we brought him I along. I thought we brought him along. I should have nope. mentioned that. All right, we'll, that. Say, we'll save our money. Okay. That's fine. Who's that's carrying him? Sorry, I shouldn't, but do, I should emphasize do that right now. Okay. That's all right. So, uh, those of you who are going first, we're going to keep you on the field here. Uh, oh, God. A number of goblins that are currently oh, held. Shit. Oh my god. Over here. One, two, three, four, five, Robert six, seven, or, eight, or nine, or ten. Yeah, those are mine. Ah. Ogres. Ogres or ogres? Alrighty. So, top of the round. Percy, you're up. I'm sitting down and I'm busting out bad news. Bad Bust news. out bad news! Okay. <laughs> bad news. So, 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 <laughs> Percy stops kind of part, you know, just as he gets to the quarry, a little, a little bit elevated, and he pulls out from the small sack on his back this large, elongated contraption, this weird construction that looks similar to the pepper box usually carries, but much larger and cumbersome. He sets it up on the ground with a small stand at the front and preps itself as a visual point. Uh, ogre. Ogre back here? Yep. All right, go ahead and roll for your attack with the bad news. Have you have you used this before? Nope, first no, time. I've been with Crack it His out. own tinkered construction, bad news. Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a 20 to 30 attack. I guess <laughs> yep. That'll do Act. it. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. Is that critical for you? Uh, uh, 19, actually, uh, Mike. Natural 19? Yeah. Natural 19. Yeah, that's your critical. For that you. does critical. So <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Ooh, I've never critical critical? with this either. What does that mean? Why uh, that means you, you have the, the damage dice you double. So oh, go for damage, double that, and then add your modifier after that. Come on, okay. come on, come on, come on. Big money, no whammies, yeah! Yes. 
Hell yeah! 11, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 points of damage. Get after doubled. it, big man. Is that in the men's doubled? Uh, that's doubled. All right. So, now, so you guys see this cacophonous, <laughs> this large blasting sound and a flash of kind of blue energy and sparks shoot out the back of the weapon. It actually lifts Percy off the ground for a second and catches wow. himself in the sheer <laughs> blast. This streaking, uh, I a sniper heated rifle. bullet, almost like reddish white hot, goes <laughs> cascading through the air, plunges into the side of the ogre's shoulder <laughs> with a smattering of blood splattering against the cave behind it. It's actually moved back a step and has to catch itself. <laughs> 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 Slams his club into the ground. Uh, that ends your turn. That end. I can't do anything after that. After that That's just hell yeah. Uh, I move within sixty Bad feet news. of those big fellows. Travels far and fast. Another oh, travels shit. faster. That this There's is the entire by the way. Oh, okay. From off was over here. Mm-mm. Right before there. Yeah. So everything there is kind of fighting from the entanglement. Great. Most of these goblins are currently in. Next 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 time. Time. I'm going to shoot a scorching ray at the big guys. <laughs> Same with both he of them? said he yeah. moved. He moved within sixty feet of them. So you moved up to here. All right. And they're all entangled. Yeah. Uh, that's good right there. That'll work. That uh, I still have entangled. These up. guys here are entangled. These front goblins are not. Scorching yeah. ray. You said at which? Actually, one? oh, there's a there's a bunch of those dudes, aren't there? I'm gonna no. I'm gonna do a uh, I'll do a I'll do a fireball instead. Right, okay. right in the right, right in the center of the juiciness, where I can get a couple of little guys and both of the big guys. All right. So I'd say probably about there would be where you'd want it. <laughs> I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna spend two sorcerer points immediately to do quickening spell, and do another spell right after that. Okay. So as you rush up, you pull back your hand, and you see the arcane red energy begin to flow within your palm. You then throw the beam out that kind of arcs, slams in the center, and explodes, hitting each of these five goblins and the two ogres. What's your DC on your spell? My DC on my spell is top of your spell page on the right. Oh, wait. Oh, 17. Sorry. 17. Okay. Uh, Oh, the two ogres actually make their saving throws. Oh, uh, what? what? Boo! Uh, 18 and 19. Roll crap, your ogres! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the goblins, however, all disintegrate. Like, I, there's no them? there's no way they're going to survive the damage you do. No, yeah, they just... Yes. You see this, like, so, kind of hint of a, of a red awesome. ash mist go <laughs> where they once were, and they're all turned to black nothings. Uh, uh, however, roll damage for the ogres. They get half damage because they made their yeah. half set. So, 8d6 damage. 8d6. Ugh. That is... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. What? 27, all right, so half that, where are you going? Thanks for the kill. Okay, so as the blast of fire kind of dissipates, you can see one of the ogres is now burnt on half of his chest, looking yeah, a little yes. rough, there's blood streaking down from the side of his face, one of the pieces of shrapnel that got thrown at him. <clears throat> uh, and the other ogre's still looking okay. He's a large creature, isn't he? Yes. I'm gonna use my second spell and do telekinesis and pick one up and try to hurl him into the other one. Okay. Whoa! <clears throat> Which one? The one left, <laughs> left here? The one that's beaten up already. Oh, I'm right? hard okay. right now. <laughs> <laughs> he got failed the saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's up just your blue. Yes. Well, send him into that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that ogre is knocked prone by the impact. Yeah! The other one is also knocked prone. Yay! Oh, yeah. Into the wall, both of them slam to the ground. And I my turn, vines, I uh, make sure my vines really grapple them. I turn, I turn to Grog. They're all yours, buddy! Go ahead and roll uh, 2d6 impact damage. Ooh, sweet. Uh, 10. 10 damage to each them? Yeah. All right. Both over now the ground, oh, kind of reeling from the impact. Uh, that brings us to Grog and Vex going simultaneously. <gasps> yes, ladies first. Oh well, all right. I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark on the most damaged one. Okay, that'd be this one here. All right. All right. And then I'm going to shoot lightning arrow. Okay, do you want to move a little closer? Yes, I do. <laughs> all right. So we'll go one. Six will put you about there. All right, there. cool. I'm gonna shoot lightning arrow at them. Okay, so you pull out your arrow. Yeah, as you pull it back, back, a little bit of energy courses through your fingers, strikes through the arrow. You can now see this crackling energy as you're pulling it taut in your bow. All right. Um, <laughs> you let it loose. Go ahead and roll for attack. Okay. Oh. Um, uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. Yes. All right, and then I do something else. One d8. Right. Yeah, you do the damage of the arrow plus the damage of the spell. Holy moly. So that's this. Um, 13 for the arrow, and then 4d8 for the spell. Uh, 8, 
4, 12, plus 3, 15, uh, 17. 17. Okay. Uh, the ogre that's been beaten and blasted by the fireball, it's getting up, <clears throat> grabs its club and begins to get up on one leg. As the lightning arrow slams into its chest, you can see it hits, looks down for a second, and then the charge boom, pulses through its entire torso as it does, it screams out, <clears throat> into the cavern. Its whole muscle system locks tight and it <clears throat> falls forward again onto its chest, smoke rising off of its whole upper Dude. area, yes. on the ground. Come on, now. And that then one the down? other one yeah. him up. takes 2d8 if he fails the saving throw. Which, with a one, he does. Yes! <laughs> the one he does. fails, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and roll damage for the second, for the uh, other ogre. Two, uh, ten. Ten damage, nice. So as the as he falls to the ground, the arc arcs under the other one who drops his club for a second, picks it up angrily. Which uh, I can reassign my hunter's mark to him now. You can. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, that brings us to. Oh, my hunter's mark! Huh? I didn't do my hunter's mark damage. Uh, oh, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You killed him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so you. <laughs> killed him. He is Wait, so oh. dead. Oh my god. The ogre is done. Um, all right. So the other ogre is angry. It's now the goblin's turn. Okay. Uh, these goblins uh, rush up. Uh, they, they are just at those dashing goblins. forward. <laughs> they are so, so dead. <laughs> so <these laughs> around. So just like and this one runs around. It is. Oh, like, it's his turn. Like, no, no, oh my god. Let him breathe. Like Let him one of those no attacks. Goblins? Uh, everyone make a inside check. <laughs> insight insight check? Yes. Oh shit. What happened? What are we doing this? Did you insight. Yeah. I literally Not hit a one. <laughs> oh my god. Natural 20. I oh, like that side check. 20, 20 total. 20. 4. Uh, so. Natural 1. All I'm right. really not paying attention. <laughs> you're, you're dealing with the fact that you just fired your gun for the first time and it kind of burned your hands a little. You're like, oh. Um, grog. Grog. Recites poetry. Grog is familiar with one thing. Fear in the eyes of his enemies. Looking at these goblins, they're not charging to attack. They're, the attacks seem to be instinctual. They are They're running. running. Oh they no! They are scared. Yes! They are fleeing from something. Oh from shit. From the ogres? Oh, no. 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 Something, something behind bigger. the ogres. Oh no. Crap. May I make a request that you kill them anyway? It's like playing croquet at this point. <laughs> <so much. laughs> I would like to rage, <laughs> and I would like to move to the right of all those stinking goblins. Right over here? Yeah, a little more to the right. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, keep going. All the way flanking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I would like to give them the cleanest shave possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead and roll for attack on the first one. Please don't be okay. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. You see that's 26. That definitively hits. Word. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, damage, crap. Decapitation! Two plus the diver for uh, 13. No, it's more. 13? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as you rush up, you bring your axe into the first goblin to your right. <laughs> Clean. You don't even feel resistance. Hey! You hear this little <laughs> sound as it's really his bicep in the side. Oh, that was cute. It's head and upper torso just rolling off of the side before rolling to a stop. However, the inertia of your axe still kinks through to the one on the other side of you. Go ahead and roll for your second attack on that. Uh, 21. That also hits. Go ahead and roll damage. 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 7 is um, 15. Uh, as you cleave through the first <laughs> goblin, you swing around. Another goblin looks up at you scared and pulls a dagger out with a snarled tongue. <sighs> uh, at which point the axe invents itself straight into its face. Ah. Its angry face goes <clears throat> and just falls slack against your blade. You lift backward, it's stuck to the edge of your axe. <laughs> limply dangling against yeah. it's gonna shake it off a little bit. Oh, double prizes, yeah. <laughs> uh great. That ends your turn. You don't have anything in range so you can use your bonus action no. for a third attack. Uh, if you wanted to do a frenzy action, but you don't need to. Uh, that brings us now to the ogre's turn. The ogre gets up, Let's see if it makes it saving throw. Uh, or attempts to drag it out, it does an 18. Uh, however, the ogre. Sweet, sweet. 40 gets about that far. He's gonna make a double move. I still have Entangle Up. He's running. I still have Entangle Up. I know. He, he saved against it. He was on Aww. the Ogre track. It's a big Ogre. College. Big Ogre's just gonna go. Poop. All right, uh, the Ogre takes his full turn to get up in the melee with you guys. Uh, it does not have to attack Ogre, so he's just full turn to get there. And once again, the Ogre, you see this lumbering forward. 
it also has this kind of look of its eye of desperation. Oh crap. Uh, you just let it pass. Uh, now it is Vax's go. My sister's right, right in the face of the other, correct? Yeah, correct. Yes. Oh, Excellent. So Ooh, I'm going to spots. take a run towards my sister. And since eye. she's right uh, close to him, he's distracted, so I'm going to turn just as I get to her. So my back presses against hers and swing around and sneak attack two daggers up and We've practiced this, I turn. So as you dodge up the side, just this blur of shadow and speed, you just coast up the side of your sister. <laughs> daggers both plunge towards the side of the ogre. Go ahead and roll for an attack. All right. One. Uh, and then with mine. That's a one. And the other one, I do a poison dagger, gets a 20. Oh! oh what did I oh, oh shit! Okay, All right. So that is dagger of venom, 1d. Four, three, plus uh, two is five. Now, does the sneak attack damage go on there? Yeah, it does, because you have another ally adjacent five. to it. You don't get advantage yeah. on the attack roll, but you can still do the sneak attack. Critical hit, too, as well, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah you can multiply the, the sneak attack so damage. So five plus, no, the, the double goes to the sneak attack damage. It does. Doesn't, doesn't, no, the mod modifiers don't double, but the, any dice you roll double. Uh, nine. <laughs> Didn't like it. 15, so 30 plus uh, 5, 35. Damn. 35 yeah. Yeah. Oh plus poison. Dear little uh, the poison's not going to factor in. Okay. You swing past her, <laughs> both blades <laughs> jam right into the side of its ribcage. You hear it howl out <laughs> in pain. As it does, you twist the daggers in a way where both blades are now uh, going in two different directions, and you carve out a section of its entire oh, abdomen. Yeah. As Lovely. you do, the flesh, almost like whale blubber, just poof, poof, slops off the side of it. Oh. Organs spill out intestines, and it kind of looks down and tries to pull them back in. <laughs> <laughs> At which point you can see like like the color draining from its face. You just kind of lean up and kick it down. The ogre oh, falls to the ground, lifeless, destroyed. So you have just yeah. enough time to regret everything that had ever happened. Yes. Well <laughs> All right, add life choices. Uh, that brings us to uh, Keelan. I never called him mom enough. Oh, and there's these, are there Should've two goblins mom. left? No, there are two goblins, goblins left. Okay, Keelan, um, run, I do a quick kind of sprint jog up kind of towards Grog and go, boof, and bring up a big stone wall right where that entrance is. Right here? No, like where things right are here? pouring out. Yeah. All right, wall stone. Wall stone, <laughs> boom. All right. A giant wall of stone now you completely seals off the part of the line. We don't know what's in there. We should talk about this for a second. And I bought us some time. I'm sure it's going to try and beat through that door in a second. All right, so I'm going to say that you move up there with your movement. Oh, no. All right. Uh, I'd say probably over here, not right next to the goblin. But I'll give you enough range. Okay. So the wall are there any um? <laughs> are there any guards around still? Any dwarven guards? Uh, they're all just kind of watching you do this now. Okay. You know, I, I just weird moment where, like, they don't want to put their lives at risk, and you guys seem to be intent on getting this battle, so they're just going to sit back and let you I go. throw up my wall, and I turn around and I say, What's coming? Yeah. Tell us you know what's coming. What's coming? Make an intimidation check. You're good at this! Feel it, you're I'm so not good at this. Uh, goblin? Oh, four. <laughs> 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 what's coming? What's coming? What's coming? Make a pity roll. A, 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 a very gentle attempt at intimidation. However, they manage to cross. The guards kind of look at you. Kind of I say we guard. will. We are about to die. It is in your best interest to tell us. No, no. They're like, we don't know. It's been different things, strange abominations. It's hard to describe. They're what? put together. No. Something's Some making things there. down there. Yeah, something there. Something's. It's what kind of thing? Uh, From where? And they all kind of are as they're talking. You hear a <gasps> against the stone. <gasps> Let's see how I'm sitting down. Um, so I bring up the, the stone cracks. You can see an odd. You can see a noticeable crack and an audible. I'm running right, right now it. diagonally. I cast the side of the wall, stone skin on my. The wall. Oh, 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 good call. Okay. I do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so you come over here. You want me to drink it with you? Yeah. All right, You're, You're also fancy. I cast stone skin on myself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we got stone and we're stealthing. We're stealthing. I'm stealthing. We'll stealth both of you. How tall are the 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 walls? I mean the ceiling. Oh, the ceiling right now is the rest of Craghammer for the most part. Your hundred is hundred. Yeah, it is huge ceiling. What's um, in the middle? Are those? I get I get within casting range. These, these are braces. That's fine right there. Yeah. Um, by I, the way, stone skin goes. Uh, this disappears. Your uh, the entanglement. Yeah, the entanglement. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But there, these are some mine carts, some random rocks. Right There's a smash cart over here from the ogre barrel through. This is just a piece of stone that's raised about fifteen feet. And these are both brazers for light in the center of the area. So. 
Uh, but yeah, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet up. Like you, you can look up to the very top of Crackhammer from here. Okay. Wow. That's fine. That's what you got. Well, let's see. So, Keyleth, uh, that's your turn, Stone Skin. Can you move up? Anywhere else you want to go? I mean, right now we're technically not in combat. So right, we're, we're out of combat. Yeah, um, we're out of combat. Just briefly. Briefly. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for the homecoming dance to start. Breathing deep, like taking aim at the wall, this. resetting everything. Okay. Uh, let me staying move. Can I move back up back. behind that pillar? You move behind the pillar? Yeah. Okay. I'm staying oh, far oh. back at the moment. So, back here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, both of these goblins, I'll just say you guys end up just taking them out. I guess not even a question. They just. You step on them and crush them. Are there any dwarves that we can say to go get Ballsack and bring them down? To the fire? <laughs> oh, yeah. Baldur. You can. Balgos. Balgus. Balgus? You're still like, get Balgus! And they're like, Balgus. grab Ballsack. Who? <laughs> Balgus. Some, some of them have crossbows set up, by the way. You can see some of them now are like barreling down to get ready to fire whatever is going to come through. Good. Poof, another crack of the wall. Oh. You see the dust settle as the stone cracks again. A large piece at the top tumbles off. Yeah. The stone wall is probably not going to hold another impact. Um, anyone else want to move anywhere? Just so taking aim. Back. Uh, I'll, I'll move up to the right uh, near where Grog is, and uh, can I? Uh, no one's taking any damage yet, right? No, no, no currently, no. You guys have been pretty, pretty clean yeah. sweep into this battle mm-hmm. so far. Wait, I can't, I can't inspire anybody here now. You can inspire everyone. Yeah. Just give me dice. Can I inspire everyone? Uh, you can spend all your uses to inspire as many people as you have the uses of it. So I still have mine that I haven't used yet. Uh, I'll inspire Vex and Vax and Grog. Okay. So mark that you guys all have a no, D8 to spend I think on you're roll, really handsome and nice. We all have you're a going to have inspiration dice. <laughs> 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 I thought you were gonna have a little. Uh, I know some on. beautiful song for us. Working on. Working on. All right, Wait, so, one, so you got, all of us, we all get all. Each of you has to have a single D8 dice. It's an inspiration dice that kind of you know the bardic inspiration has flown through you that you can That's use to roll. to oh, add to an attack roll. Not damage. You can add it to an attack roll, a saving throw. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That, that's what charm sounds like. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, so you can use it on attack roll, a saving throw, or a, a ability check. Okay. Like a skill. Awesome. Alright, so. Uh, Tiberius, can you stay where you are? Are you going to move anywhere? Last chance. Uh, I'm gonna, is that cover right there next to me? Right over here? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get behind the cover. Okay. Um, and we're going to peek out, and I'm going to cast Blair. <sighs> okay, so this thing goes away. No, I can't do both. No. Nope. Then it's that, uh, they're both concentration spells. Okay, so I, I, concentration I leave stone skill. I leave, okay. I leave stone skill. So it's gonna stay stone. Great. Uh, all right. So at which point, <laughs> boom! The stone breaks through, scattering across the ground. You see immediately cruising through. What the fuck is that? What is it? A bulbous, oversized naga-like Bullshit. creature. You've encountered a naga before, which is a a, a, a naga. A, a oh. large serpentine creature with a humanoid head. However, this one is swollen, it is bulbous, the way it moves looks unnatural, and it has affixed to it not one, not three, but five other different colored naga heads that look to be stitched to its body. It is a seriously terrible abomination as it just breaks through the stone. All the heads kind of rear back. Do heads do something if you look them? We're beginning back at the top of the initiative order. Oh, oh shit! Something with naga heads? Wait, 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 I got a question. My hunter's mark, can I transfer it to that thing or do I have Correct, to? Correct, you can't, yes, because this is still part of the encounter. We're just not using the battle for that. So that is now marked the hunter's mark. Uh, Percy, you're up first. Do I have to take new aim or can I have myself already trained on. on uh, you've had a moment to train. You haven't seen the creature until it just burst out, so it would take you a round to aim. I'm taking my round to aim. Okay, so you're aiming. Uh, that brings us to Tiberius. Um. <clears throat> What did you say? We did. I just what? took a game. We took, took a game. Did you roll an issue? I'm using the same initiative. Same oh, gun. Oh, oh, oh. Just a gun. Okay. Take a time. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> a gun. This gun doesn't do anything fancy. So okay. um, they shoot up really far, really hard. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll do a scorching ray. Don't. Scorching ray. All right. Yeah. Saving throw. It does not roll to two. So full damage on it. So two to four. Let's shoot two of them right now, right? Or three of them. Uh, is it an aimed ray attack? Yeah. Then you have to roll for the attack itself. Oh. So roll d20 and add your... Oh. Uh, roll high, roll high. Uh, Top your spell page. Top your spell page. Oh, uh, that's 20... Uh, what's that? 20, 23. 23? 23 hits? Yes. Okay. All right. And then that's 2d6. Uh, that's 12. 12 points of damage to the yeah. target. All right. Uh, that brings us to... Wait, I should, I'll go for the second shot, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's a natural 20. Oh! Okay, 
Do you fire one meme off? It slams into the side of one of the Naga heads. The second one you bring back, and as you do, there's a flicker of arcane instability. His arm shakes as he releases the surge of scorching energy as it blasts into the side of the Naga. Uh, also, does not make a saving throw again. Roll full damage and double it. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, this shit. Tiberius. Oh, my God. 12. 12? Yeah. Multiply? Or did you roll 12? I rolled 12. 12 times 2, 24 points of damage. Oh, no. Ah. I'm terrible at math. <laughs> yeah, you're good at Stay in school, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just blasting the cyber with a knock on head. This is a red time to note our charity, 826 LA. <laughs> 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 Don't donate next week. Next week. Next week, next week you can donate to that. All right, so that brings us at the end of Tiberius' turn. Do you want to move it all? You're saying where you are? I'll stand right here. Thank all right, Robin Bex, you're out. Oh, oh, me! Okay. I'm going to shoot. Um, oh, God, I didn't realize I was going so fast. What did you roll for? Oh, no, the way. I'm just going to roll. Oh, what? What did you roll for self, by the way? Oh, I rolled a. Oh, I rolled a 20 for self. Oh, well, then yeah, he has no idea you're there. Sweet! Did you see the bear? Oh, one uh, in the corner. Um, okay. Uh, Trinket's going to hang out because I don't want to. three You know. Um,. <laughs> I'm going to shoot Conjure okay, okay. Barrage. No, I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot him twice. All right, go for it. All right. Arrow once, arrow twice. <laughs> Legolas style. Uh, but I am gonna do um, the fire Legolas. arrow thingy at it. Okay, so you, using your, is, your your bowstring. Yeah, bowstring the blazing bowstring. bowstring. Thank you, Tiberius. That he created and crafted. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so as you pull the second arrow out, you you knock it. As you let it go, it <laughs> bursts into flames, arcing halfway through the air. Okay. What was your hit roll? The now? 21. 21 hits. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, wait, that's a four plus seven. Don't forget 11. your inspiration. Uh, what inspiration is for the hit? Oh, okay. 11. So 11 points of damage. For the first one, plus um, for, the blood, for the blazing bowstring, I get... Um, I can turn any arrow into a flaming arrow, doing yeah. additional 10 fire damage. So awesome. I'll roll that right now. There you go. Which is this, which is a seven. So an additional seven, so 18 total damage on that arrow. <laughs> in the side of its body. Oh, One of the serpent heads reels back yeah, from the pain. You, begins that. snatching it where the arrow's not protruding from it, trying to break it off. And then I'm going to roll attack. again. Uh, that's a 24. That hits, good roll damage. Awesome. That's an eight. Draw your own deck. Seven plus seven is fourteen. Fourteen damage. All right. Both arrows sink into it. Yeah. Definitely kind of piercing through the scales a little bit, but not sinking too deeply into its body. It's definitely a hardy creature. Um, Grog, you're up. Right. I would like to run around the other side of the rock, raging spit flying out of my mouth. <laughs> and I would like to use the chain of returning, also crafted by Tiberius, attach it to the end of the great axe, and throw it from where I am at the snake. Okay. Yeah! So I was running around. <laughs> Rears back and takes his double handed great axe and woof, woof, yeah. woof, just lobs it overhand. The chain that's wrapped around your wrist, keeping it attached to you in some degree. Go ahead and roll for the attack. Uh, no, no, 17. 17? Can uh, I? Just hits. Oh, yeah. All right, nice. And that is 15. 15 points of damage as the axe woof, 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 embeds itself pretty deeply into the oh, torso. I didn't and do I have hunter's to... mark. Roll hunter's mark damage right now. Thank you, thank you, chat room. <laughs> Six! Six, awesome. Six damage. All right. This is now, an athletic strength that's required to pull the weapon from I missed who it was, but 12. thank you. I like yes. this. So go ahead, go ahead and roll for Rod and Rod. Yeah. No, you roll a roll a d20. Oh, d20. It's a DC 12. Roll a little, 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 little. Shit, balls. Taint, five. Plus? Plus what? Plus plus your athletics. Oh, oh, that's bound to be good. Seven. It's 12. 12 is the DC. So yeah, <laughs> you pull back the chain. <laughs> and the, the blade is uh, it's resisting. It's stuck in the torso. And then actually, it flies back and you just barely catch it. <laughs> I love your joy oh, sounds. <laughs> 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 All right. Do that. Do that. Now it's oh. now it's its turn. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Yeah yeah. Come on. Oh, shit. What? Why me? No, <laughs> oh, that's not me. For its size, me. when it's it moves, it moves in a burst of lightning energy. It almost is too fast for its, for its, its corpulent form. Damn it. Um, as it goes behind to Keyleth and Tiberius, uh, it uh. makes an attack with each of its five heads. Uh, two on Tiberius, three on Keyleth. Remember, you guys have stone skins. I believe you have resistance against damage, right? Oh, yeah. yes, I do. All right, so against uh, Keyleth, it's a natural 20. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. uh, it's a 12. Plus seven, it's gonna be a 19 to hit. Uh, I think it's you as well. Yeah. 
and natural 20 again. Oh, wow! Oh, so wow! So two critical hits and a hit on you. What is this bullshit? I know, Tiberius, uh, that's a 22 to hit, and a 13 to hit. Uh, one does, one does not. Okay, cool. So against Keyleth, you take... God, cat, stone skin. I know, so you take half damage to these, which is fine. Yeah. So you're looking, that's a 2 plus 4, that's 6. Damage halved, you take three damage. Oh, sorry, three multiply two because if it's a, it's a critical, that oh, would yeah, let's you. Not forget So you take six damage from the first strike. That's nothing. That's six too bad. damage. Uh, you take seven damage from the second strike. Okay. And another six damage from the third strike. Uh, although, actually, it would have been six, four, and six because you have resistance in the damage because it's double skin. Six, four, and six. Yes. However, make a constitution saving throw. Uh -oh. as venom from the fangs oh, of no. the to Where pulse is she? into your bloodstream. Oh, I should have taken these uh, points. I thought you did. Yeah. Resistance. No, you talked talk me out of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? Constitution. So, uh, yeah, constitution saving throw. Uh, <laughs> I know we do. Fuck. Oh. Natural one. Oh my god. Natural one on the constant. Oh, okay, so no. you feel this Goose burning. Head. It's a bad day. Burning Wait. pain pulse in your bloodstream oh. as your whole body doubles over from the pain. Uh, oh, Keyleth dies in episode you one. You suffer Ouch. 31 points of poison damage. Whoa. 31 oh. on top of the six, four, and six. Yep. <gasps> are you okay? Poison damage is um, not. Are you okay? Because mm -hmm. it is not a. Is Keyleth unconscious? No, she's okay. No, no. no she's, she's okay. okay. Yeah. She's okay. Yeah. She's not entering oh. any. Tiberius, <laughs> you take. 13 points of, of damage, half by stone skin, so you take a total of 7. 740. Oh, and no. also make a constitution saving throw. So. Uh, what's my, what's, uh, 16. 16? You manage to physically resist the poison in your system. You feel that sweat tinge, the muscles tense, but then yeah, your, dragon, your dragonborn form begins to just shrug off the effect of the venom. Can uh, I turn to him and blow fire out of my nostrils? Sure. That's what I do. Flares off his face. <clears throat> True Dragon Board challenge. Yeah, you are. Uh, that brings us to Vax. Okay, I start <laughs> jogging backwards. Uh, backwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and can I sneak attack by, while throwing? Don't get too close. Uh, you're stealthed currently, so you yeah. would technically get a sneak attack, but you have to be in melee for to get the other bonus. So what would a sneak attack for this damage if you were to roll? Or if you were to throw a dagger at it? You yeah, would get I'll, a sneak attack. Okay, I'm gonna, so that means just one throw instead of two? Um, you can throw both daggers. All right, I feel so inspired by Scanlan's bardic. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can add it after you make the roll, by the way. Okay. So if you do a really good roll, then you don't need it. Okay, 19. That's, that's a good one. Plus 11 is 30. And because you're a rogue, uh, that's when you get a, is that a critical for you? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Two critical. Yeah. 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 One yeah. Yeah. The other one. The other one is a 16 plus <sighs> 26. That also hits. Yes. <laughs> You chuck both daggers out, they both kind of arc around from the very wind. You're used to throwing around. Yeah. Thank God. And, I, I was, and I meant to say, I was aiming at its eye, the main head's no, eye. No, you should okay. have said that. Sorry. <laughs> All right, wherever well, flavor it is. Flavor is fine. Where Go ahead. It's fine. All right, four. Plus seven is 11. Plus Favorite hashtag, though. Five. That was really funny. <laughs> uh, 11. 17. 17. No. 18. 20. 20 times 40 plus 4. 44, no. that's the first deck. Yeah, 44 damage. 44. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Rogues, man. Help me! What? Really? And the Help. other one. That's is, just one? That's dagger? just one. 4 plus 2 is fair. 6. So is that sneak attack? No. No, you only want six. sneak attack per turn. Okay. 40 right. and then 6 on the other one. So, yeah. so <laughs> one actually hits one of the heads, one of the, one of the various Naga heads directly into its face. As it does, it goes through both eyes, and you can see it begin just reeling from the attack. Um, it's looking pretty rough, actually. Oh! Uh, the physical form, you can see the stitches beginning to come apart at some of the seams. You can see kind of a, a black, Icarish liquid kind of spill out from some of the suture marks. And just a reminder of the daggers, folks, blink back to the belt on my waist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because it's magic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> magic magic rogue shit. All, All right, somebody finish uh, it off. Kill, Kill it, you're up. Kill him. Kill him. Okay, so I'm Revenge. really upset. Um, <laughs> really hurting. I'm so uh, out of anger, I, I take my staff and I go, whoop, bam, and I crack and I do thunder wave, pushing him back 15 feet. All right. Uh, he's makes almost dead. Wrong, but he uh. gets pushed back. So he takes damage. It's half damage. Okay, two d8. So one, two. Um, yeah, as you're setting up your gun, it gets slammed six. right point blank to you. 
Oh, sorry. That's no, that's uh, good. It takes right. four damage. Four damage already? Um, and then I'm going to turn into an eagle. <laughs> okay. As one does. <laughs> yeah. So we'll save for now. Sure. We forgot to bring an eagle. Sakao! Sakao! We forgot to bring an eagle. Sakao! 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 <laughs> and then um, I I fly away. Away! <laughs> away! 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 Where are you going? Four damage. Tell us, damage. tell our story, <laughs> Keelan. <Kim. laughs> that's pretty great. And then I cry in the corner and rock back and forth a little bit. Okay. And that's my turn. Uh, I forgot to make sure you take half damage. Saving throw from the venom, so you would still take in uh, fourteen points of poison damage. Oh, so just mark okay. that. Okay. Uh, it is half damage on the save. All right, so that brings us to Scanlan. Oh, can I Kill bonus uh, inspire myself? Uh, can I? <laughs> because you're Scanlan, I'll say yes. You have such such a high opinion of yourself <laughs> so that even you can inspire yourself. yourself in this. So yes, why not? It would help <laughs> me to acquire some dice to expi- inspire. <laughs> okay, so uh, I so I inspire myself first. Mm-hmm. I move. Five feet back, so I'm on the same row as him. There? Uh, no, there. not that far. Yes. There you go. And then I'm going to cast Lightning Bolt at him. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Straight line that way? Straight line that way. All right. So you don't have to roll to hit, you just roll damage on that. I'm oh, oh I didn't Sweet. even need to inspire. What's well, your DC on the spell? Uh, Top of your spell list. Yeah, right. Jesus. 17. Thank you. 17? <laughs> uh, that's a failure on a saving throw. Yes! yes. Go ahead and roll 8d6. 8d6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Kill him. Bards, these are eight. Yes. Okay. God. God. If you kill, it spells from other classes. I'm gonna take a shit on this table. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Moment. Oh my god. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. No way. Twenty-four points of lightning damage. No Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. I want to do this. Yeah. Matt say how do you want to do this? this? I, I let the yes. player describe their, their victory. So, as you sing to yourself to bolster your arcane energy, you release the sheer bolt of the energy. How, what do you, how do you want to do this? The, the bolt of lightning uh, be, begins in its, in its tail and works its way up through its spine, slowly but painfully torturing it as it slowly, slowly yes. feels the effect. Coursing through its evil body. <laughs> All right. So, uh, because of your, your your bardic ability to actually shape sound from an arcane standpoint, a lightning bolt should be an instant flash of arcane energy. You actually cause it to crawl. You control it as it begins to cascade up the torso of this this horrible abomination. As it does, you can see the bolt splinter and destroy each suture wound as each of its heads begins to. Poof, slaw off the rest of the torso until nothing is left but the single head that's screaming into the air as the bolt makes its way up the neck. Its eyes burst out in a blast yes! of energy. Yes! <laughs> and the body falls limp. Can, can, it, can it have a lightning bolt shaped in, the, in an S? <laughs> a scanlet <laughs> shaped lightning bolt is burned into the torso of the strange Naga beast. <laughs> well done, Scanlet! Well done! As, as the dust settles, the adrenaline's still pumping in your system, Scanlin. All the rest of the dwarves begin stepping down, putting their crossbows down, looking down at the little gnome that created a storm from its hands. And kind of pat, one of them pats him on the shoulder and goes, well, well, well done. Thank you. Just promise me that you'll tell Pike about this. <laughs> okay. Because it was really cool, right? That was pretty cool. Okay, good. As they all, all the dwarves kind of look into the, the tunnel that it came from, and the one that you spoke to earlier kind of goes, so, um, that's the kind of thing that's been coming out of there. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. That was, that was really helpful. Oh. We'll go ahead and leave the game there. Oh. Oh. Hey. Folks, well done. What's up? I uh, hope you guys had fun watching our first first ever critical role, but uh, <laughs> that was a good time. So we'll be here next week again on Thursday, 7 o'clock, though. 7 Today was just a special yeah. early edition because all of you can is going to South by South. Good job, dude. Dude, thank you, Zach. Yeah. Who's yeah. that guy? Yeah. yeah! This was fun. This was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's actually the most fun I've had all week, not having <laughs> to, like, die of stress behind the Good! Yeah. <laughs> that was That's good! Uh, yeah. yeah, that was great. Um, so, guys, I hate to end it so abruptly, 
But we are actually packing up the cameras that are filming me now, our units, everything, lights, uh, and getting on a plane and heading to South by Southwest. We may stream tomorrow. We may not. Uh, we're kind of flying in blind. We'll see what stuff looks like when we get there. But thank you guys so much, and we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it's going to be great. Woo. Thank you all for coming.